Welcome to the Sky Dome in the heart of Coventry city centre. I'm here in the changing room with just under an hour till face off where Warwick and Coventry will be doing everything they can to bring home early varsity points. WTV just to find out that slither of hope for the rest of tonight's action from the Planet Ice Arena, the opening match of Varsity 2013. It's between, of course, the University of Coventry and the University of Warwick. So we're going to have a face-off now in the centre of the ice. The low point, I think, here for, Coventry, for Warwick as they've struggled in this second period. They started it only 2-1 down. Now they're 6-3 down. Shot from distance. Oh! Shot from inside the neutral zone. Only just tipped away. They're really looking to test the goalkeeper here. They Warwick have it in the neutral zone. Warwick is still in the neutral zone, trying to move it forward. Not able to, there's a man down, but he's quickly back up. Coventry now, two on two attack. They're gonna pull it wide and try and go behind the goal and build from there. Behind the goal is the Iggy, the star man we expected. He goes down, a little good hit there. And um, as you say, eight goals, perhaps one, he will be a little bit disappointed with, but his performance as a whole, top class. Coventry shooting from deep, and it's Harrison out again, charging out of his goal to uh, push that puck away. Behind the goal, very close to the end of the period here. One big hit, and that's going to be it, I think, to take us through a fight now. And have a proper fight, a punch is thrown, men are down. This is a very fierce night down in the defence area. The fans love it. There's punches being thrown, a man has been thrown to the ice, and the punches are continuing to come in. The referees are trying to drag them apart. Oh, my goodness. The fight here has provided the late drama and the penalty. The fights are breaking out all over the rink. The referees are having to hold back the players. And at the end of what was an action-packed period of hockey, we've had a real outbreak of fighting there. Multiple fights, multiple punches being thrown. Jamie, the passion here is spilling over. It, it's quite extraordinary. I've never seen anything like that in uni university hockey before. I, well, as, as I speak to you now, there are six sticks and six helmets strewn across the ice, which shows you just how vicious that fight was and how it ended up with, well... I mean, chaos, basically. Yeah, I mean, it started with a really good, clean hit from the Warwick player. I think that will be the end of the second period. Another chance for Warwick now with a face-off in the Coventry defensive zone. It's Eagle who scored Warwick's last goal with it. Shot from deep for Warwick. Oh, just wide. Warwick again. Warwick right in the, in the slot in front of the goal and not able to force it in. Back, shot from distance. And it's a goal! Warwick have scored on the power play. The shot came in from distance. It came through from Belfit into the crease. There are a number of players there. And the important thing, we're not quite sure who had the final touch, but that doesn't matter because the ball, the puck ended up in the back of the net and Warwick have pulled one back. University of Coventry 9, University of Warwick 4. Yeah, five on three power play. You've really got to capitalize. And Warwick did that well. Warwick have got on the board in this third period, 9-4. And still they attack behind the goal, trying to pull it back into slot, but it's blocked. Still still on the power play, of course. Chance now again for Warwick, and another goal for Warwick! They've scored two in quick succession, and they're restoring some pride here. They're bigging up the fans as they celebrate in the neutral zone. They're raising their arms, the fans in front of me. They're out of their seats, they're clapping and they're dancing. Really, morale boosting here for Warwick in the third period. Coventry. Only a minute left now, and the result's certain. Coventry University are going to win the first encounter of Varsity. Now oh, here comes Coventry in the counter-attack. Man in the slot, chance, goal! Coventry cap their excellent performance with an 11th goal in the last minute. Coventry 11, University of Warwick 7. 
Some of the Coventry fans doing the Poznan, the famous Manchester City celebration over to the far side. And really, you can understand why they're so happy because their team has been brilliant. They've dominated from start to finish. And that 11th goal, really no more than Coventry deserves. Final seconds now of this enthralling encounter. And there is the final buzzer. Coventry 11, Coventry 11, Warwick 7. The first varsity point, the first varsity blood, the first varsity glory goes to the University of Coventry. Varsity 2013 highlights then, explosive as you might expect. And Simon, one thing we've got to start with, what a fight from last year. Sure, you know what? We may have lost the game, but the fight was the real crowd pleaser, I believe. Neither of those guys are actually returning to play tonight, but there are some big physical guys out there tonight. Maybe we'll get more of the same, you know, it's high emotions. Last year was phenomenal, we won the fight. So, you know, bragging rights to us on that topic, but hope for more of the same. Yeah, you know, we're not the only fans here on, uh, on Warwick TV, but at the same time, it, to some extent, that's what university sport's about, especially in a big rivalry like Warwick and, and Coventry. I think that uh, it was a hard game last year. We got outclassed a little bit, but the, the guys fought hard, literally, and, you know, put everything on the line. And if they can carry that kind of mentality into the game tonight, I think we should do quite well. Coventry winning by 11 points to 7 last year, of course. Jamie, and um, one thing I always remember from last year, and you were here commentating, of course, fantastic atmosphere is always in the Sky Dome. Yeah, I think that's what makes the event so special. I mean, these guys play a lot of high-quality hockey throughout the year, but this, this one is, is special in all their calendars, and I think the emotions really run high, and that's what's going to make it special tonight. And Rick, a quick reflection on varsity overall last year. 70-20 to Warwick in the end. It's the third varsity that you and I have watched. Is the pressure on Warwick higher than ever, or will Coventry feel like they can do, or they can only do better than they did last time? Yeah, I think, I think for Coventry, they, they've really got to improve. Um, they've been getting closer, but last year was a real kick in the teeth, I think, and they'll be out to prove a point, I think, tonight. Is there a pressure to an extent as well on Zoe Buckland, the Warwick Sports Office assignment? Because she won't want to be the first ever Warwick Sports Officer to lose varsity. Yeah, it's true. Like, as we've been saying all evening, there's so much pride at stake here. Like, this is bragging rights in the area. There are bitter rivals, no more than in the ice hockey where we play the regular season with them. So my teammates are out there supporting the other team. We need to win this for our own pride. But Coventry have been putting a lot of money into their sports programmes of recent years. So it's getting tighter and tighter, more and more exciting. I can't wait. Let's look ahead to tonight's action then. And Jamie, I think a sense tonight possibly that this is Warwick's best chance of winning in the ice hockey that there has been for some years. Yeah, certainly. If you look at the last three years, the squads, they've been heavily in, in Coventry's favour. Whereas this year, especially in goal, Warwick have an advantage. In defence, Warwick have an advantage. If Warwick keep it tight and keep, the, keep it a close game, they should be favourites. Right, well, we'll talk more after this. First of all, though, Rob DeMont spoke to uh, Warwick Vice President and President Tom Hitchcock and Matty Consala earlier tonight. I'm Robert DeMont. I'm here with uh, Matty Consala and Tom Hiscock, who are the captain and vice captain of the Warwick ice hockey team. Good evening, guys. Um, I just wanted to ask, first of all, uh, obviously, tell, talk us through your feelings before the big game. Yeah, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's the same thing as every year in that we've got quite a good team overall, whereas Coventry's got a couple of really good players in the forward, their defence is weak, so it's interesting to see how the balance is going to play out. Yeah. But I'm really excited for it. Yeah, they've got uh, two good lines of forwards, so really strong. Their D are quite weak this year, so um, if we can drive it around their D, and their goalies are quite weak as well. We can, I think it's going to be a high scoring match. Um, they've got their forwards to put it in against Dan, who's like our superstar goalie. But um, I think, yeah, I think we can get, we can get the win this year. I don't want to say that now. No, I, don't want to say that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask. I mean, we've obviously Warwick don't have a particularly good record in the in the last few years of Not winning the, the uh, no. of winning the ice hockey against Coventry. But you yeah. are you more confident maybe of, of turning the tide this year? I'm confident. We've had a couple of players drop out, but um, so of Coventry. Um, it's just all going to be about the game, really. Um, we don't tell them now. But we're going to play more of a defensive game this year and um, just try and get some breaks. Like their goalies are weak, so we can jump into that. So, okay. Do you think it's an advantage or, or a more of an advantage or more of a disadvantage? Um, how well the two sides know each other? I think it just makes the game better for everyone. To be honest, it becomes a bit lower scoring, and I think everyone generally enjoys it a bit more because you don't get any nasty surprises. Well, there are a few players who don't generally play with us in the league, but but 
I think it just helps everyone on the ice because you know what's coming and it's a bit safer for everyone. I think just just it's a good thing. Okay. Hey mum. <laughs> <laughs> how important do you think the uh, the atmosphere will be, and how important do you think the crowd will be in in, in spurring on both both yourselves and the Coventry team as well? It's it's huge. Like this is it's difficult to describe because most of our games get about fifteen guys coming down to watch and then they grab a couple of beers and make a bit of noise. But but now you know, like even if you don't look, you know when things are happening. When there's someone behind you, everyone just starts shouting, and it just gives you that extra boost when. You know, you've got the puck and you've got a thousand people shouting at you and it's, it's really enjoyable. You feel pretty badass when you get a goal and everyone's nah, cheering. That's true. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, um, who are the particular danger men in, in the commentary lineup that you're, that you're maybe uh, watching out for in particular? They've, uh, got, they've got two guys that play semi-pro. Uh, one of them's called Rich Slater, the other's Luke Brittle. So those are two but we haven't seen anything from Luke Brittle this year, so we don't know how he is as a player. They've also got uh, Vincenzo Ferrara and a guy called Iggy. Uh, Iggy is from Lithuania, he's like a fast forward, um, he's not too good at passing, so if you see this, <laughs> uh, so, um, I, think, I think they've got some speed behind them and they've got a few guys who can put, put away goals, but um, I think there's four of them that we need to look out for in the defence. Okay, and, and who, who in the Warwick side should we be particularly looking out for to, uh, to turn the game in our favour? This guy's quite interesting, he should, he should score, I mean, what, two years ago he scored a hat-trick, so... That's definitely something to look out for. But we've got, to be honest, we've got two strong forward lines. There's a small guy called Liam Martin. He's very, very talented. He's a new kid. He's basically, he's a really good skater. He's really good at passing. He's, he's definitely going to be... A small guy, he's got a lot of himself. speed. He'll, uh, he'll burn their D, definitely. Okay, and do you yeah. think, uh, do you think either, whichever way the result goes tonight, do you think it will set uh, Warwick on the way to another, yet another varsity victory this of year? Course, of yeah, course, of course, yeah. 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 He's going to run away. Yeah. Okay, a lot yeah. of confidence in the uh, Warwick ice hockey, ice hockey camp this evening and uh, thank you guys for, for speaking to me and good luck with the game. Final countdown to face off here then at the Sky Dome with a timely reminder of course that you can get in touch via Twitter with us this evening. Just tweet us at Warwick Varsity and use the hashtag Warwick Varsity to share your views on anything that happens over the next couple of hours or so. Building up to face off then, Jamie, uh, we just saw an interview with Tom Hiscock and Matty Gonsala. How key, how key will the two presidents be to White Coats tonight? They're going to be two of the most important players on the ice. Tom Hiscock didn't play last year. He was in Canada improving his trade. The year before, he was man of the match for Warwick, scored a hat-trick. He's going to be a flashy player. He's going to be a player that the Warwick crowd are really going to get behind. And that's important because Coventry are normally the louder team, louder, louder supporters even. So if, if they can get, Warwick can get behind Hiscock and, and Warwick, that's going to be a big advantage for them. Starnet Minder uh, in last year's performance, of course. Dan Harrison, uh, Simon, absolutely fantastic performance last year, despite being on the losing side. How key will he be to Warwick's hopes? Oh, he's going to be absolutely vital. I think he could be our star man again tonight. He's a really good friend of mine. He's who got me into ice hockey. Um, I'm hoping for a star performance, and he could steal this game for us tonight. And Mick, finally, very briefly, rumours, of course, that Coventry are going to build a Great Britain women's uh, player tonight. What do you make of that? Yeah, those rumours we think now are being confirmed. It's uh, Olivia Mason, uh, former GB women's player as well. It's a really interesting, really interesting story. Um, we think that she can play either offence or defence, so we'll have to see how she lines up tonight. But, yeah, it's an interesting proposition to see how, how she competes with the guys out there. Right, so we're tuning up so far then, as far as Varsity 2014 is concerned. We are minutes away from face-off, so now time to go over to your commentators for this evening's action. Dan Stewart and first, Isaac Lee. Yes, thank you very much, Joe. So here we go again. 23 Varsity series, 23 Warwick victories. The victory so often proves elusive for Team Warwick in the ice hockey. Coventry won 11-7 last year in a feisty encounter here at the Sky Dome. And whilst the players out on the rink are normally teammates, I can promise you there'll be no love lost out there tonight. There's a real feeling that it could be Warwick's night tonight though, Dan. Is that something you sense as well? Certainly, Isaac, yeah. Um, not so fortunate the last few years on the bounce, but tonight seems to be the start of a uh, shift in power. So to speak, we need some big performances from our biggest players, thinking Daniel Harrison in particular, who put in a real shift last year, as the boys in the studio have alluded to. As I say, big performances to throughout tonight. Crowd get behind them. I really do think this is our night we can do it. Yeah, a real sense of teamwork um, around uh, Warwick this year in particular. Um, for Coventry, though, two danger men, two or three players, uh, really, really important. Um, but Warwick won't worry too much about them. I think that's a strong unit. 
That's yeah, um, a very strong unit, stronger than last year, I think, as the boys in the studio have said. Some returning players, Tom Hiscock in particular, I'm thinking of. Um, Dan Harrison, really reliable in the net as well. And I just think they've got the star quality. Coventry have as well, of course. Perhaps not so much in the back, not so much in the defencemen. Um, the game is there for Warwick now, in my opinion. If they all play to their capabilities, the boys, I think they'll be all right tonight. Yeah, it is strange for Warwick that, um, you know, they're so dominant in the varsity series. But in ice hockey, it's actually really a case of Coventry advantage every single year. So this needs to change. And I can sense, really, um, you know, sold more tickets than ever before here at the Sky Dome. Um, crowd in absolute raptures already. It's one of the biggest nights of Varsity calendar. It's one of the biggest nights and you know it's a great way to start it off. Every year Varsity is massive. We usually see perhaps a rugby event, the events towards the end drawing the bigger cloud, crowds even. Not tonight. This is absolutely it's a buzzing atmosphere. Um, I, I just can't wait to get underway now. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah, it's been built up for so long. Varsity 2014. Could this be the 24th year in a row that Warwick beat their old rivals um, in the Sporting Series of the Year? We'll have to wait and see. A Mexican wave going around the crowd at the moment. Um, the crowd absolutely loving it. Coventry have sold out their allocation completely. They obviously feel like it's their night tonight. You sense a real optimism, seeing them all filing in. This is their event. This is where they really shine. Yeah, this is their event. They haven't won Varsity ever, as is well documented, as the players come out onto the ice now. There's Warwick doing a little lap. Yeah, Warwick in blue tonight, Coventry in white. Uh, the ice ring looking absolutely resplendent out there. Um, and you really think that this is one of the biggest occasions for them. As said, these guys are teammates throughout the year. But when they were warming up, none of them were looking at each other, none yeah. of them were talking with each other. They really care about this. This is a chance to get one over on their teammates. Precisely, and it's, it's very, very interesting from a psychological point of view because these guys know each other inside out. You know, they know their games, they know how each of them play. Um, now they've got to come up against their good mates. So it's going to be fascinating to watch, really interesting to see how it pans out. Um, in all honesty, I think the battle's going to be won in the forward men tonight, the attackers. Um, both teams have really got star potential in that area uh, of the rink. So, you know, we'll see what happens for Warwick. You know, they are going to stand a chance, which I really think they do. I think they've got to keep it tight, um, certainly in the first period, even up to the halfway point in the, in the match, I would say, um, and then push on from there. And, you know, I'm fully confident. The crowd here are absolutely buzzing. They think they can do it. I think we do too up here in the gantry. That's the overriding presumption. So let's leave it to the boys to put in a good performance. Yeah, looking at that Coventry team, there's a couple of standout names in there. Richard Slater, seven goals last year. Really, really threatening. And somebody working going to have to neutralise if they want to win. Luke Brittle as well. Uh, that's representing Great Britain at under 18 and under 20 level. There's some big names in there. Yeah, some huge names, you know. And they're, they're all um, in the attacking end of the pitch, for in, of the rink even, for commentary tonight, which is why Dan Harrison's got a huge job on his hands once again. Um, but I think he's up to it, as we saw last year. Certainly a big advantage for Warwick there, that we've got a real good goalkeeper who is who's in fine fettle. Um, and I'm, back, I'm backing him to have another good performance. He's got to. Interesting to see Olivia Mason, um, of course, on the pitch, for, on the rink for commentary tonight. What do you make of that one? Interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Um, not that much known about her. She's represented Great Britain, um, but she was certainly holding her own in the warm-up. Um, and you do wonder, uh, you know, whether whether Warwick will hold off a little bit from from being confrontational, from being physical, or whether they'll treat her like any other player. I yeah, hope, you'd hope they do. Yeah, I hope they do too. But there are different different rules for. Oh, having the national anthem. So there we go. National anthem. Bit of touch of class. Yeah, nice touch here. Yeah. Um, at the Sky Dome, um, the crowd simmering down here as the players line up. Um, all of them. Helmets off. Helmets off. Helmets off, indeed. It's a strange time, I think, for the players. Yes. Yeah, it's so tense. Teammates eyeing each other up here. Yeah, you can see staring at each other. As I said, no love lost out there tonight. This is a nice touch. It is a nice I touch. I didn't expect to see this. No, not something that I think has been used before. Um, don't remember it happening last year. Um, but certainly a grand stand opening to Varsity yeah. 2014. Well, there we go. That was the national anthem. Uh, the gloves are off now. It's time to get going here at the Sky Dome in Coventry. Warwick versus Coventry. 
Uh, mixed question got Warwick off to a winning start yesterday. Uh, winning 338, 224. Uh, but this is the big event. Um, the skies are absolutely packed out, face paint everywhere, uh, people wearing claws, wearing t-shirts. You can sense there's a real sense of nervousness out there tonight. The players skate around the ring, they get warmed up. Um, a number of Scandinavian names in this war team, Dan. Um, it is clear that you know, all the alumni that come back, for all the Scandinavians that come back, this is a diverse team. Yeah, it is a diverse team, and you know I think it's brilliant for, on both sides as well. It's diverse. You've got a lot of a Sc Scandinavian input for Warwick and for Coventry, of course, and it's good that they can include and draw on players and experience from all over the world. You know, Britain traditionally isn't the most dominant uh, country in ice hockey. It's great that we can draw on the talents and abilities and experiences from all over the world, really, from all over Europe, and hopefully it will stand us in good stead tonight. I suppose with the Winter Olympics happening right now. That might be the reason why there's been so much interest. I've never seen the Sky Day like this. I've never seen a varsity event with so much hype. Yeah, and for me, Winter Olympics, yeah, of course, but varsity is getting bigger every year, especially with Warwick's continued success. Uh, want to be a part of it, you know, and it's fantastic to see. It's fantastic to see all the Warwick supporters come down here tonight and get behind the side. They're all absolutely buzzing for this one. We're about to get underway, the first face-off, and I can't wait. Yeah, the first face-off about to get underway here. Up on the rink, Mr. Hamilton, uh, one of the officials here tonight, has his hand in the air. They're ready to start, and it's going to get going, guys. I can't wait. I'm absolutely delighted that this is finally starting. Here we go. We're underway here. Immediately, here, here. number 26, Richard Belfort falls down, and Warwick coming forward now. Josh Holly plays it wide to the left, and that's the first chance created by Warwick. Yeah, fast great start. Great start, for Warwick. Josh Holly pinched it. Um, ran up for his neutral zone and fed out to the left wing. Um, and it's a good initial effort. We're going to have a face-off, and it's a great start. Yeah, another face-off, the physical Josh Holly, and the first year here. Uh, he pulls no punches, and he's certainly doing the same here. Matty Consala, the Finnish defenseman, acting president of the club, um, plays it forward. Uh, and now Coventry breaking away at pace. And here he is. Luke Brittle, so to Slater. That's a great block again from Dan Harrison, the goaltender, who will be so important for Warwick tonight. Yeah, that's uh, going to be the danger. Rich Slater down there. He's had one shot on target already. Um, we've got to keep an eye on him. Seven goals last year. He's certainly the danger man uh, for Coventry. But Warwick holding their own hair in these early stages. Uh, physical down on the boards. And down goes number 77. It's brittle. That's, that's Luke a brittle. It's the first penalty of the match as Eggle comes tripping off. It's a bit of hustle bustle down there. They're checking him into the walls, but that's a bit too feisty from Eggle. Um, yeah. And this is an early chance for Coventry, the first power play already. Yeah, very, very early start um, for Coventry in this Warwick zone. And here come Warwick, though, moving forward. This is Benson. Benson. Chasing up the other end, and there's a coll collision there with number 52. Benson crowded out by Coventry, and they move forward through their own defensive zone and into Warwick's attacking zone. This is number 16. It's Jonathan Stobart. That's wide, and Warwick can go again frantic stuff early doors isn't it you know Warwick, Warwick are bound to be nervous they're going to have to soak up a bit of this early pressure from Coventry but they're going to have to keep their key men quiet We've had a good shot from Slater already um, got to watch it got to watch it at the back Warwick yes here come Warwick again flicking the ball the puck forward and here comes the goaltender out and knocks it to number 52 Coventry moving forward again a little bit scruffy in these early stages you can sense both teams trying to settle down and find some kind of a rhythm um, and that's number 78, Parku Nainen, um, giving possession back to Warwick. And the, oh. the puck up the other end, as you can sense, this is end-to-end -end stuff. One of the Warwick players lost his stick. First slip of the night, I'm sure there's many more of them to come. But, you know, Warwick have uh, just got to feel themselves into this game a bit now. It's on yeah, home for Coventry, of course. Both teams sort of feeling their way into the yep. game. No clear-cut chances as yet, um, as the puck goes forward. That's, that's flicked to the side um, by the goaltender for Coventry, who move forward through their own defensive zone again. Some slick early passing from Coventry. Jonathan Stobart, well challenged there by Richard Belfit. Um, former president Play. of the club and founder of ice hockey, and that's fantastic stuff from Belfit. Yeah. And that's a very physical challenge there by Ignace. Yeah, really getting stuck in. As Richard Belfit looks real calm and composed. He's a lot older than these players. Graduated a good five or six years ago now. So he's got a good foul. Oh, it's a big hit. It's all getting a bit frantic down this there. This is getting really, really physical early on. Luke Brittle here. You can't let him have space like that. And he's missed, but only just Warwick there. Really struggling to contain Luke Brittle, who's one of their danger men this evening. 
Um, as Coventry again come forward. And that's surely, nope, a lot of physicality early on here. And here come Warwick. Josh Holly, the physical fresher moving forward. And that's, now it's near to the Coventry net. Yeah, Warwick with a clear chance in front of goal. And that's smothered by the Coventry goaltender. Gonna have another face off here, it looks like. Not a bad start, Coventry in the ascendancy, it's early doors. Warwick yeah. have just got to be a bit more assured in possession, I think. They've got to have had the puck a few times to, in the neutral zone around the halfway mark of the, of the rink. They've just got to keep possession, look for their key players. Yeah, frantic start as you'd expect here at the Sky Dome in Coventry. Um, over a thousand tickets sold here tonight, which is really a testament just to how popular Varsity has become as Coventry start to break away now. But possession is one back by Warwick, nicely cleaned up at the back there, and they start to move forward now. This is Benson flicking it inside, but he's dispossessed, and Coventry can move forward again. That was Hackinson uh, propelling the puck forward, but Coventry back in possession near their own net in the defensive zone. And Slater moves forward. You can hear the crowd. Murmurs of unrest here. There's a lot of physicality out there, a lot of big challenges going in. Pulling no punches. Yeah, it's another power play. It's Coventry's second of the match already. Um, Warwick just got to retain a bit of concentration and not give away stupid fouls and get to silly penalties early doors. We, we can't afford to concede. Well, yes, not at this stage already. Coventry made an extremely fast start last yeah. year with three minutes in this year and uh, still no goals. So Coventry. It's an improvement. <laughs> it is an improvement on last year where they really came out the blocks quickly here. And now here's a real chance for Warwick. There is Richard Belfit. Richard Belfit for Warwick. And that's saved. And that's saved there by the goaltender. First fantastic start for Warwick. Yeah, great little breakaway there, Richard Belfit. And I would have backed him to score. Um, would have been a fantastic early advantage. But, you know, it's good pressure. It's another shot, and we'll take that. We're building in this game. Yes, another face-off there uh, between Warwick and Coventry. Coventry in the Warwick half. Uh, and moving forward now. It's Coventry in their defensive zone. Still nil-nil, I remind you, after three minutes. Um, as Coventry tried to move forward uh, through the middle of the rink. And now, here's Coles for Coventry. That's a, a real waste of possession. Play. Yeah, it's a little bit frantic. Warwick have got to impose themselves on this game more. Find their key men. Look for, look for Richard Belfort. He's made some great runs through the middle. Um, oh, Holly. Uh, 16, a absolutely big, big hit from Holly. Coventry. Absolutely flattened, um, and it's certain that at the moment um, Coventry and Warwick are both really going in for those challenges. As we said before, you know these guys are teammates, but you wouldn't believe it from what you're saying out there. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Certainly, Josh Holly, who's just gone off the power play. So yeah, Josh Holly. We did earmark him as one of the more physical players in this Warwick team. Um, yeah, true to that. This this is a huge off for advantage for Coventry now. They're two up. It's five on three. This is when Warwick's backs are really going to be against the wall. Got to knuckle down. I'd be surprised to see if we can see this out. But two minutes for Josh Holly uh, for holding. Um, as Coventry look to rebuild in their defensive zone, the ball's over now with Coles. Uh, flicks the puck forward into the attacking Olivia zone. That's Mason. Olivia Mason, who we've heard so much about. A surprise inclusion. Um, she's represented Great Britain um, women's team. Um, she'll certainly be an ace in the Coventry pack tonight, you would imagine. Again, a little disjointed as uh, the goaltender there, um, number 30, Alex Young uh, for Coventry. That's where, where it could make a difference tonight. Dan Harrison, so outstanding as goaltender uh, for Warwick. And this is real back to the Wolves. Oh, it totally was. We were handcuffing ourselves, killing ourselves with those early penalties. But then we were looking dangerous on quick breaks. And that move, he fought off two defenders who were slashing at him with their sticks. And that move, pulling it across the goalie onto his backhand and sliding it in at the back door with an open net. It had the Warwick fans on their feet. It was an absolute beauty. This is my second year of kind of watching the eye talk here. And that is the, the best piece of so kind of solo skill I think I've ever seen. Fantastic stuff, Jamie. And, you know, Simon alluded to it just then. Amazing atmosphere at the Sky Dome once again tonight. Yeah, it really is. And, and like, like Simon was saying, Warwick really got into it after that first goal. It was something really spectacular, really extraordinary. Uh, I've been playing for three years and I've been watching a lot of hockey and I've never seen something like that at this level. It was, it was a really spectacular move. 
and the Warwick crowd, crowd are loud and they're giving it to the Coventry fans and it's really something really enjoyable to see. Yeah, we seem outnumbered, but we, we, don't, we don't hear them. We don't oh, we haven't been out sung. Yeah, we, we look outnumbered, we definitely don't, we definitely don't sound it. Uh, been a few songs going, a couple of beers flowing and yeah, the atmosphere is great and I think it's going to get better the longer the game goes on. There's actually, I think, a penalty shootout going on behind us uh, at the moment. Plenty of banter, of course, between both sets of supporters, as you'd expect uh, in Vars. Um, let's take a 15th minute goal, Simon, where Warwick doubled their lead. We almost all missed it, but Liam Martin with his second of the game. Did Warwick deserve to be 2 0 in front at that stage? I th like, when we went forward, we were very purposeful. Once again, I don't think, on the balance of the game at the time, I still think we were still finding our feet but we've been decisive in our play and that's what really matters at this level, you know? We see it in professional sport all the time. A team can be completely outclassed and then all it takes is a couple of minutes of genius, a couple of class touches and he's provided two there. It was another really good goal, sound like rang in off the post there. But you know, he put the team on his back at that point, him and Hiscock, they were, they were linking up really well. And hey, he's, he's scored a couple of crackers. Let's hope he keeps this up. Jamie, is this fundamentally a Warwick side which is much more confident perhaps than the side that lost 11-7 last year? Yeah, definitely. I think speaking to a few of the players before, I'm speaking to the Coventry players before, they all knew it was going to be a lot more even game in terms of the strength of the roster. And seeing some of the way the way that some of the Warwick players have been skating at at the Coventry defence, they've really been taking it to them. They've really been trying to skate round and trying to make plays rather than just to pass it away. So yeah, it's a lot more confident team. And for players like Hiscock in particular, that's only a good thing. I think for me, the big difference is that last year, we knew that the Coventry team had a lot of class, especially in the O-line. And the problem was that I don't think Warwick really had the depth to take advantage when it was a, when the Cobb second string were out on the ice. I think this year we do. And, and it's shown that when, when Slater is not on the, on the ice, then they look a far weaker opposition and Warwick have definitely taken advantage. Have they disappointed for you, Simon? Coventry star men, have they disappointed so far or do they look a threat still? Uh, every time they're on the ice, like I said, I'm slightly on edge. I really think they do carry a big threat. We've seen them moving it around. Aldi have been playing, playing well when they can see them. I think it's just a bit of presence of mind when things are kind of set up in the zone. They need to pick up players better and cover them better. But when they've been skating at them, I've seen a couple of great poke checks away, a couple of guys getting a bit physical with them. When it's when it's sensible, there's times they've been hitting them when it's been it's been ridiculous. They don't need it. But at the times they've been standing them up well, keeping them to the outside. There was one really bad moment where I think it was Hackinson uh, carried the puck out from behind the net, took it around one person. I was on edge. We went to take it around a second person. That person was brittle. It was an awful turnover in our end. Brittle went in. Made a pass to Slater. Slater hit it first time. But Dan Harrison, we have to thank that because that was one of the best blocker saves I've seen in a long time. There have been a couple of kind of dodgy defensive moments. Olivia Mason's goal at the first one. Yeah, you know, a great moment for her, obviously, kind of in, uh, making her varsity debut. The commentary, but really poor from the Warwick point of view, I think. Uh, I mean, has Mason Rick struggled with the physicality, do you think? I mean, obviously, she is a British Women's International and she's made a mark on the score sheet, but is the physicality of the game a problem at the moment, do you think? Yeah, I think a little bit. They start her out the wing and, and to some extent I think she's been trying to avoid the action right? she, she's just been trying to feel her way in that goal will have helped I think but I think she has struggled with the pace a little bit she doesn't seem the quickest skater on the ice and I think that's, that's starting to tell a little bit it's been pretty physical so far we are looking forward perhaps to a fight uh, in the next couple of periods make sure you stay tuned just for that alone uh, and a reminder of course you can get in touch via Twitter tonight to tweet us at Warwick Varsity um, I think Simon was going to say something and actually Simon were you going to mention Olivia Mason? Yeah, I was just going to talk about her because she does look nervous out there, I can't blame her. It's worth bearing in mind that women's hockey is a non-checking sport. That's yeah. not to say it's not physical, there's a lot of boards play, a lot of pushing into the boards, a lot of pushing and shoving. Um, but the big body checks and the big hits that we're seeing out here, she won't be used to, even playing at her high level in the women's game. So that's got to set you on edge. There's some big hits we've seen. Some of them have just been silly at times. But it's, it's going to hurt if you're a smaller framed woman like she is. She's, she's very technically good and she, she's a good skater, but she just doesn't have the power and the speed and the strength to take these hits that these big guys do. So I can't blame her. And like we said, she scored that goal. She was in the right position at the right time. But I don't think she's going to factor too much as like carrying it to our boys. I think, I think like you said, her positioning is excellent. She knows what she is doing. She's obviously been very well trained. And if they continue their defensive lap, continue to play a little bit rough around the edges. She will find more opportunities because she is going to be in the place to capitalise. 
And Jamie, her goal obviously to make it 2-1, coming in almost immediately after Warwick had scored to make it 2-0. How disappointing will that have been for Warwick from a defensive point of view to concede so soon after going 2-0 up? Yeah, it, it's obviously gutting, and it's, it's not something we haven't seen before either. The last couple of years, Warwick, once they've scored, have tended to, to drop back a little bit. Part of that is Warwick defensively lapsing. Part of that is the firepower that Coventry have, because if you, once they've conceded, if you put Slater and Bristol on a line together, it, it's a very deadly combination. But yeah, it, it is extremely disappointing. Controversy uh, in the 18th minute, calls for goal line technology uh, in the studio, in fact. Uh, Rick Brown, uh, was it a goal or was it a goal? I, it's so hard to tell, Joe. Um, who knows, to be honest. Obviously, from a Warwick perspective, we're going to say it should have been given. The Cov fans will be saying it shouldn't have been given. I think I think it's a hard one for the refs, to be honest. You know, you're going to upset ones that are fans either way. And, and I, I have no complaints. I obviously would have loved it to be given, but we're still, we're still a goal or two up, so I think we're, we're fine. Coventry goal, tend to getting away with one there, Simon, I think. Yeah, well, the way our boys celebrated down there, they had their arms up in their air. I, in the air. I think when you see that kind of response, you can be pretty sure that it was... They probably saw it go in. I'm not lying. I think it was a goal. People down here were on their feet. Um, but, you know, it's the ref's call at the end of the day. You've got to respect that. Goal line technology would sort this kind of thing. But you know what? They have video reviews and things in the NHL. We don't have that luxury. But what was most impressive was the way we responded because yeah. then we came back, didn't we? A stunning goal from Tim Donison this time. And once again, Jamie, uh, Tom Hitchcock at the heart of it. Yeah, he really showed his power and his skating ability there just to breeze round the Coventry defender. But uh, again, you, you don't want to, to be too harsh on these Coventry players because they are stepping up a lot. But it, it was too easy for, for Tim. He, uh, he really just made it look like no one was there. So I, I think if, if he can continue to play like that and continue to capitalise on the weaker Coventry players, he, he could be in for a big scoring game. Um, Rick, how disappointing again, though, from a work perspective, to concede a goal almost immediately having gone into a 3-1 lead just before the end of the period? Yeah, it wasn't ideal, and I think the guys would be disappointed with it. Um, it was a little bit scrappy again. The defence switched off a little bit. Um, Dan Harris made an initially good save, and then, the, you know, the puck found its way into the goal, and obviously they'll be disappointed, but I think we've shown good responses to when, when Cobham scored before, and I think if we come out at the start of the second period, grab a couple of goals then, and we're, we're flying. Still very much all to play for. Um, Simon, is it more it's to lose from now on in? <laughs> I'd be very nervous to agree with that statement because, I mean, it's playing out very much as we said. Carl posing so much threat going forwards with those superstars on their top line. But you know what? I think if we keep playing like this, if we can shore up those defensive errors that we've been uh, showing so far and we can cut out the penalties, I really think... Well, I've never seen us have such a good chance of winning by a good margin here. And Jamie, White will always be a threat on the break as Coventry looks to get forward and looks to get back into the game. Yeah, that's the thing. Warwick have some very fast forwards and they, they do look very dangerous on their breakout as Coventry pile forward. And I, 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 would, I would say it is Warwick's to lose, to be honest. I think they do have the stronger roster. Coventry are only in the game really because Warwick have been shooting themselves in the foot. And I think as opposed to previous years, Warwick would and should be very disappointed if they don't come away with this with a win. 11-7 uh, to Coventry last year, 10-5 to Coventry the year before, Rick. Um, different scenario this time. How do you think Coventry will react to being a goal down at the end of the first period? Yeah, I think it, obviously from last year it was something they, they didn't really experience. They went into like a 6-7 goal lead and then Warwick you know, fought back in the, third, in the third period but obviously didn't have enough to get back into the game. So I think it'll be a test of their metal to see how they respond to being a couple of goals down and, and to see you know, how, the, how they chase the game. It'll be interesting to watch. Do you think lessons have been learned from last year's silent? Because obviously I think at the end of the second period last year, we were out of it and it was a case of playing for pride. But there's something different this year, isn't it? A different feeling about Warwick Ice Hockey. Yeah, you could sense it. I was down in the changing rooms beforehand. The Warwick guys seemed quite calm in general, probably more calm than myself. Um, but they were, they're really optimistic and people you speak to around and speak to some of the commentary players, they were quite nervous, especially alluding to our depth, which we've already seen. We can put out quite a few different guys on the ice and still, still pose a threat there. Once again, I really do think that goal at the end of the period, about 12 seconds to go, I think, a real, a real backbreaker, you might say, because that's the worst time to concede, going into that break. That didn't look too happy about it, our netminder. And it's given commentary a little lift at the end yeah. there. But our guys just need to gather their heads, 
come together, realise it's not the end of the world, but still a goal up, and come out and start so strong in that second period. Ultimately, Jamie, as far as Warwick are concerned, is the key in the second period simply staying ahead and sitting back, or is it the fact that ice hockey is such an ever-changing game that they need to go forward in search of more goals? Ice hockey is very much a game of defense. It's a cliche, but it's true. And I think Warwick have looked their best when they're in Coventry zone. Their, their strength is their forward play. Coventry's weakness is the defensive play. If they can set up in the zone, get some of their passes a little bit more tape to tape and, and, and really capitalize on, on their strength, then they'll be in a good position. If they fall back too much, Slater, Brittle, they're always going to create chances if, if you give them the opportunity to. We'll be going over to an interview with a fan uh, in just a couple of minutes. Um, first of all, though, uh, Simon, in terms of Warwick's perspective for the second period, they're ahead, which is something that they're not used to in varsity ice hockey. The psychological boost and hopefully the momentum will be behind them. As long as they can put that second goal behind them, I really think they do have the momentum. Like you say, it's a position they've not found themselves in before. This is quite a fresh feeling team. There's not too many guys who were here from, from last year. There are a few but like these guys are, are adding freshness they've got they've got this exuberance about them they're wanting to push forward they're wanting to score these goals and I think they'll be in there they'll be trying to take the positives that's what they've really got to focus on because there were some strong positives they've got to take note of those weaknesses that we've already talked about cut them out and start strongly and I really think this second period is obviously crucial but if we can win it I reckon we go ahead and win the match I'm here with two very passionate Warwick fans how are you guys enjoying your evening so far? Yes, amazing. The game's really exciting. And we're in the lead, so that's always good. Yeah, I'm pleased. Three, two, it's not bad. We need to get some more possession, though. Uh, I think. Okay, and what do you think of the atmosphere? Do you think that Warwick are out, are out cheering their, uh, no, their we're opponents? We're trying. <laughs> yeah. We're trying. There are still more of them. I thought there was going to be more Warwick matches. Well, there's, there's a lot of them, but it's good, though. There's good atmosphere down where we are, anyway. And, uh, yeah. Okay, and what do you think of the goals? What did you think of the first goal in particular? First goal. I mean, getting through three players and the keeper, that uh, was pretty special, so nice way to start off, definitely. Okay, and, uh, and how do you fancy your chances for the rest of the game? Yeah, we're going to win, definitely. No, okay. no question. Thank you very much for speaking to us, guys. Cheers. Cheers, thank you. I'm here with two very passionate Warwick fans. Resuming uh, the chat ahead of the second period, um, Rick, in terms of the, kind of the momentum, we, we spoke about the strength and depth, we've talked about it plenty of times so far this evening. Um, as Coventry tire as the game goes on, will Warwick's strength and depth, you think, come into its own, possibly? Yeah, I mean, there's only so much time on the ice that this later and Brittle can spend. They're going to get tired, they're going to, you know, even if they come on and score a couple of goals, they can't be, they can't be out there for the entire two periods, and I think that is when Warwick have to take our chances. We said before that, Unlike last year, I think Warwick have much better strength and depth, and now a, a chance to actually capitalise on those those moments of weakness. And I think, yeah, I think if we can do that, then it should be a high-scoring game, and I think it's a good chance for a Warwick win and, and to go four 0 up in Varsity. It's physical. It's uh, closely contested, Jamie. Um, no question that both sides completely committed to the cause tonight. Yeah, and that came really from the big hits in the beginning. It was it was obvious that both sides were ready to play. Both sides were ready to put their their bodies on the line. Belfort in particular has been throwing his body yep. on the ice, blocking shots, really committing to the cause. And I, I think that's only going to continue, people putting their bodies on the line. And it's going to be fascinating to see how it pans out. And you know, Simon, we talk about flair, we talk about solo individual ability, but how important is the physicality of a player like Belfort to work side? I think if things are going bad for you in ice hockey, one of the things that you do, even at professional level, you always have like these tough, gritty lines that you throw out there because these big physical hits aren't just physical things, they're also psychological. They can really get a team going. If you see a guy putting his body on the line for your team, you want to get behind him, you want to back him up, and you're all going to get a lift from that, I feel. So I think it's important for raising their own game, not only psyching out the Cov guys with some big hits, but also getting themselves going. Uh, we are ready then for the start of the second period, all still to play for, Warwick one up, Coventry one down, let's rejoin our commentators at the start of the second period, it's Dan Stewart and first, Isaac Lee. Thanks very much Joe and welcome back to the Sky Dome where we're back on the ice now, ready for the second period, Warwick 3, Coventry 2 as it stands, um, Dan, 
It's finally poised, and that Coventry goal very, very late on in that first period. Good change of complexion of this game. Yeah, for the neutrals, a perfect time for Coventry to score, but very much open, you know, both defensively, both sides, and not been at the peak of their capability, so to speak. And the longer that continues, the more goals we're going to see. Um, the difference, in my opinion, so far has been Dan Harrison. If he can keep up pulling off some very decent saves, especially from the likes of Slater and Brittle, then Warwick are most likely to retain their lead. Um, but ready to get back underway now. Warwick especially will be ready and raring to go get the second period underway. Hopefully an early goal in the second period. And yes, um, that could help to sell a few Warwick nerves. They're not used to leading, they're not used to being the better side. But so far, they have probably just about shaded it. Although Coventry have certainly had their moments. Uh, players are swarming up on the ice. Uh, as we speak, ready to get the second period underway. Four 20-minute periods here at the Sky Dome this evening. Um, three three 20-minute periods, I, I beg your pardon. It's certainly um, this period, Dan, you think, could, could decide the game because if Warwick can stretch their lead, um, then it's curtains. But if Coventry can work their way back into the game, it might be a sense of here we go again, another defeat. Certainly. You know, and in, 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 in years gone by, Coventry have had a, a lead sometimes a commanding lead going into this second period not the case anymore it's almost uncharted territory for Warwick and they've, they've got to make the most of it they really do need the big performers to carry on their impressive displays in the second period here we go it's the, it's the second period first face off back underway uh, Slater winning the uh, the face off for Coventry they'll be looking to respond uh, to a disappointing first period they trail 3-2 um, Warwick in possession of the puck uh, as the crowd Sing again. They've had a fantastic spectacle to enjoy so far here at the Sky Dome. Luke Brittle in possession for Coventry. Plays it towards um, Slater uh, coming forward um, for Coventry. Um, Slater Warwick and Brittle saw, saw an awful lot of ice time in that first period. They can't go the whole match. And it's another good effort. Really, really good opportunity early. Alex Young has held on to it. But Warwick, who is certainly uh, looking to um, assert their dominance early in the second period. They're not looking to settle on this one goal lead, that's for sure. And that'll be a, a power play, I believe. Um, for the face-off. Warwick, face-off. Face-off in Coventry's defensive zone. Good save that by Alex Young. A good opportunity uh, for Warwick to assert their dominance, as we say, early in this second period. Um, Coventry, though, moving forward now. Um, they want an equaliser as early as possible as Ferrara scraps for possession, but it's back with Cousins of Coventry. And he flicks the puck forwards. Warwick mop up quite nicely. And Tom Hitchcock, who's shown glimpses of his undoubted talent, but has failed to really dominate the game so far. Um, he runs through. And player stopped. Yeah, it looks like he left his kit at home tonight, Tom Hitchcock. He's got a number yeah. 55 on his back with a makeshift strap of his name atop. But we don't mind, he's had a blinder so far. Yes, yeah, so he can wear what he likes as long as he decides yeah. this game in Warwick's favour, preferably. Um, 54 seconds, scruffy so far in the second period. Warwick 3, Coventry 2. Do get in touch um, if you've been enjoying our coverage or if you're here watching the ice hockey. Hashtag Warwick Varsity. We'll be using that throughout the fortnight. There's a clash uh, between a Warwick and Coventry player um, over by the boards, but the both players get up pretty quickly and play resumes um, here. Yeah. Coventry in their defensive zone moving forward. Uh, Cousins with a strike and that's rattled Harrison's post. I don't think we really quite expected that, Dan. That was a really good long-range effort. Yeah, it was a good long-range effort. Not too far away. A little bit scrappy over there by the far board, but that's all fair game. You're allowed to check each other into the boards. I'd like to see a bit of physicality. Puck fell loose to Cousins and as you say, it was a big hit, big shot. But luckily, we well, held on. Another face-off here. Warwick um, looking to win some of these. They've been pretty poor in these 50-50 clashes, and they have done so again. There's a chance for Brittle. So. Comes off Harrison, and Warwick just about managed to clear that away, but Slater's still in possession, and he's looking more and more dangerous growing into this game. Um, another clash um, between a couple of players. Uh, Coventry managed to mop it up at the back here. Um, and there's Heiken coming through a couple of challenges now. Uh, Warwick... In the middle, looking a little bit open. It's a bit back to the wall as far as the start of the second period, isn't it? For all right, got to dig in deep. Couple of early shots. Here's Olivia, Olivia Mason. Mason. Just in that hole, with a little, managed to find a little bit of space. And Slater's brought down, and um, but Harrison manages to nullify that danger. Looks a potential penalty to me. Thought he got tripped with his stick. Obviously not. Nice interlink between Mason and Slater. She's adopting space, as you say, filling up that hole. 
between that neutral and attacking zone for Coventry. She looked, she looked bright. She's looked an intelligent, really good skater so far. She's fitted into this Coventry team. In a game which is so frantic, she's just there managed to find a little pocket of space. Um, and if she can keep picking up positions like that, uh, where it could be in a bit of trouble, they won't quite know what to do with her. Um, but at the moment, um, it's a face off. Um, Slater, again at the forefront for Coventry. He's won quite a few of those 50 50 challenges. Um, and Warwick here with a good opportunity. And um, here's Atkinson. And that's Big a huge hit, hit from Cousins. Big hit. Biggest hit so far, I think, possibly, of the evening. Um, players come out of it unscathed, though. And here's a good chance here. Fun of goal for Warwick. Um, but it's flicked over the top of the bar. And Coventry can breathe again. Um, they, as much as Warwick, will be nervous. Um, Warwick not used to being in this position. They seem to be dealing with it relatively well, though. They haven't looked flustered since conceding that second goal. Yeah, they've looked calm, they've looked composed. You know, the er early doors, it was very, very scrappy. I think three or four power plays for Kov. Aggressive behaviour, unnecessarily so. They've certainly calmed that down. You can see that reflects in the scoreboard. They have a commanding lead, and Warwick now also have a power play in their favour. Big chance, big opportunity. Yes, a very, very good chance here for Warwick. As you say, leading 3-2. Um, Josh Holly having a word in the face of a ref here about delaying play potentially. Yep. Looks to be in the face of it for every face-off. Not great success rate so far. It looks like he's getting G'd up for this. Big chance. Come on, Warwick. Big chance now. The Warwick facing us here um, up at the top of the gantry. They're really, really going for it. They know that they're on the cusp potentially um, of a really, really significant win for Warwick. What a tone that would set for the rest of Varsity going through until next Sunday finishing with the uh, Rugby Union um, as Coventry mopping up in the defensive zone at the moment skating down the right hand side and forced to retreat they back into the defensive zone and again a little bit scrappy just as the first period started fairly scrappily with little incident so has this second period as Belfit looks to make a break for Warwick but has been nullified and here's Benson the number 28 moving forward huge hit there from Iggy, who's been involved in a few of those confrontations. Went flying into the boards at the side of the rink. Nothing doing though, and Young manages to pounce on the puck um, for Coventry. Really feisty start to the second period. Clashes flying in from all over the place. And I just find it fascinating, considering that a lot of these boys play together under the title of Warwick and Coventry Panthers. And here they are, all in the name of vast varsity, bashing each other into the sideboards and making a great entertainment. It's feisty this time, but it's all fair play, as we know. A lot of dirty, dirty tactics in the first period led to quite a few sim bins and power plays, but it's a bit more clean now, so to speak. Yes, anyone who's listening to Joe Barnes' commentary last year will know that there were plenty of fights breaking out last year. We haven't seen anything oh, huge sloppy. yet, but that's poor. And you can't give Luke Britton that kind of space. Dan Harrison does fantastic. Sticks his left arm out there, because that looked like a certain goal for Coventry. And now on the counter-attack, here's Tom Hiscock. He's shown glimpses of his talent so far. He's on the left-hand side. Matty Consala from the back with a skidding low effort. Um, but Alex Young is relieved to see that go wide of his left-hand post. Warwick again, though, having a little purple patch at the moment. 30 seconds left on a power play. Can Warwick make it count? They're going to have a face-off in their favour now. This is re really where it's going to matter. 25 seconds to go on a power play. Coventry really backs to the wall. Yes, some of them really... Uh, yeah, it's very clustered around that goal mouth area. Handbags is what the announcer calls it, and I think that's fair to say, Dan. It hasn't quite erupted yet, but as the game ticks on, you sense it could well do. Yeah, it's the beauty of ice hockey. You know, they can rough each other up a bit. And, and, and I think rightly so, it makes for a better game. As long as it's all fair play, not, sim, not getting simbin for it. You're allowed to check, you're allowed to barge into the boards. It's Richard making Belfit. for entertaining. Striding through the Coventry Belfit. defensive zone. That's a fantastic run from Belfit. And it's a chance for Warwick. But the referee's blown. Very scrappy again and around that gum up there, yeah. A little bit feisty there. Some shoving there. Bit Coles looks shoving. up for it. At the moment, it's still up for handbag variety. Um, Warwick 3, Coventry 2. 3 minutes 52 seconds into the second period. Yep. Second of three here at the Sky Dome. 15 seconds left to go in a power play. Can Warwick retain their two goal lead it comes Skidding in with a Alex Young just about the second attempt more pushing and shoving here more pushing and shoving helmets coming off and this is getting heated no love lost is what I said at the start and that's being proved here 
As number 52. Parkinson. As Zemla. Uh, Parkin Parkinson and Zemla. And they're both trudging off. Parkinson ripped his helmet off, didn't he? He looked really up for that. Parkinson trudged off. And then Zemla has him. given him a nudge in the back on the way out. Yep. We said it would get heated, and it really is starting here at the Sky Dome. These players might be teammates every week uh, for Warwick Panthers, but when they're out there on the ice in varsity, it's a very, very different kettle of fish. Very interesting tactically. You know, the first period started off with uh, some big hits and some big power plays. And it looks like the second period is starting off in exactly the same manner. Hopefully it can pan out in a similar way for Warwick. But a bit of a, a bit of a, some lost heads out there. They've seen the red mist. And Warwick in particular, just like Harkinson did there, got to keep his cool and be the bigger man and not, not engage in the fight. Just keep the concentration. Absolutely. Another face-off here, um, I think, for, for Warwick. Who at the moment, um, in the second period, have, have been better in the face-offs. You know, in the first first period it was all Coventry they were winning all those 50-50s but now I think Warwick have started to realise that they need to start winning them if they're going to win the game overall yeah just getting a bit more stuck in you know you can see that in every aspect of the game the checks the, the barges um, it's a bit more even but it's also a bit more scrappy we haven't had really had any shots of note so far in this half which is which is okay for Warwick but Coventry will turn on the heat at some point they've got that star power they have that capacity to do so so it's only a matter of time before Warwick really have their backs to the wall again but with Dan Harrison at the back, they may be able to stick it out. Jonathan Stober and Andrus Eagle contested that based off a flying shot there uh, from Warwick. Um, but Alex Young is relieved to see that go over the top. Uh, here's uh, Tom Donison, um, formerly, uh, well, he's now studying at Oxford. He graduated from Warwick last year. He's been fairly peripheral so far, um, but certainly an experienced and hard working player. Holly with a chance and a good save from Fantastic Alex Young. Save. Fantastic save, really, Josh really Holly. Good reflex block. Josh Holly in acres of space. That's how important a save could that be for Coventry. In Very central break. position. He'll be disappointed with that, I dare to say. Massive really hit. Good Massive Iggy hit from down. Josh Holly. Holly is everywhere Number at the moment, the fresher. But he's got back up. And David Coles, the score of that own goal, which made it 3 1 to Warwick. With a skidding low effort. Dan Harrison happy to flick that off to Tom Hiscock. Um, who loses possession though. Um, Warwick though will start to rebuild um, from the back. And here's Richard Belfort with ambitious low effort. Alex Young sees that go wide. Warwick still looking threatening though. As Cousins for Coventry. Comes away a little bit of time. Um, it's all getting a bit nitty gritty isn't it? Some loose sticks flying around in the middle, of the, the, middle of the ring. Um, both teams um, giving away possession a little bit cheaply. Um, and now Coventry with the puck. Number eight, uh, here's Iggy, who's two players try and bring him down. Great individual run from Iggy, a flying effort, but that goes wide. Yeah, we heard a lot in the build-up that Iggy was not the, not the biggest team player ever likely to see. Could have laid it off then, could have looked for the assist, but he went for glory himself. And obviously, Harrison in fine fettle. A good solo run, though. He's certainly dangerous. Yep. Um, and alongside the likes of Brittle and Slater, somebody to keep an eye on, I think it's fair to say. Eagle uh, tries to flick the puck forward for, for Warwick. Um, but Cousins manages to scrap that out. And here's Richard Belfit with a low effort into the midriff of number 78. Not sure this is the same match that we watched in the first periods, but no. it's all a bit scrappy, no real moments of quality, no real shots on target. Dan Harrison hasn't really been called into action in the first quarter of his period. But all a little bit disjointed out there on the rink. Five minutes, 49 seconds into the second period. No change from the score at the end of the first period. Warwick 3, Coventry 2. 2012, Coventry won 10-5 last year. They prevailed 11-7. This year, it looks like a different storyline could be written and how remarkable that would be given all of Coventry's talent. And that was a fizzing effort from Liam Marsden again. Score of 2. Uh, Matthew Consala sweeping things up for Warwick and he moves forward. Very solid, very stable. Um, for Warwick at the back, the finished defence man. Um, and here now, Luke Brittle for Coventry in the defensive zone. Starting to move the forward, but they've given it away. Both teams really, really careless yeah. in possession and at the moment. Is, from a core perspective, we're going to look now for Luke Brittle to get a hold of a puck and control the tempo of the game a bit more because their star players really haven't had too much of a look in it, apart from Slater's fantastic effort to make it 3 2. Luke Brittle in particular has been a bit quiet by his standards, so there's still a long way to go, of course. Is it fair to say you think that, that Warwick will be happier with the scrappy nature of this game? 
Of course, they've got the lead, so they're going to be happy as long as as long as they're digging in, digging in deep. And as I say, I've said it time and time again, as long as Harrison is performing as he is, they've got the upper hand. Of course, they've got the upper hand, and they're restricting the shots at the moment. As they want to keep down the penalties. They can be as scrappy as they want, but they don't want to start getting dirty. They don't want to start adopting underhand tactics. They want to keep it at five all because that's when they have the better chance of scoring on the breakaway. Jonathan Sobat and Josh Holly contesting the face-off there, and which Warwick again managed to, to get something out of. They've really improved that side of their game in this second period. Hackinson battling for the puck, and now coming forward, it's Josh Holly. Certainly not a unit to be messed with, and he's clattered into the boards um, by, I think that would, must have been uh, Ferrara. Um, for Coventry. Big performance so far in this second period by Josh Holly. Seems to have popped up everywhere. He is the enforcer, if you like, coming in with those hard tackles, roughing the Cove boys up a bit. Is Harkinson? That's a good effort. Yes, uh, Josh Holly, quite, uh, quite a pedigree. He's played a few games for Guildford Flames, senior side. And what's been given there? A lot of pressure and shoving. I think that could be. It's that. There's a fight. Yep, now it's time to get going. Harkinson over there, throwing a few pushes. Referee comes in and starts to mop the action up. He's not having any of it, but that really shows that this is, uh, is getting important. Coventry getting a bit worried. Harkinson and Coles. Harkinson right at the centre of it again. That's the second time. And I'll tell you something, I'll put money on the fact that Coventry were trying to wind him up, trying to target him. That's the second time they tried to get him worked up, agitated. First time he didn't respond to it. Second time he didn't respond to it. He's keeping a lid on things, but Coventry really are trying to ruffle Harkinson's feathers. And fair play to him for keeping quiet. That's what the neutral wants to see. They want to see these fights. They want to see the physicality. They want to see that intensity out there. And I can tell you that we're certainly bringing you that here on World Top 2 on AM and Warwick TV, live from the Sky Zone, where they're taking a quick break. Exactly seven minutes gone in this second period. And Dan, they'll probably discuss the game plan, Warwick, at, at the end of the first period. Do you think they're sticking to, to what they wanted? Not necessarily. I think it's all a bit too scrappy. And I, I think with ice hockey, it's so end-to-end. -end, so many changes throughout the match. So you just got to go with it, you know, you've got to land your, land your tackles and get as many shots on target as you can. They'll be happy so far because their big players are performing. I don't think you can really say the same for Coventry. Uh, and that's the difference so far. Coventry look weak at the back. They have shored up a bit in the early part of his second period. But as long as these defensive mistakes are still fresh in Coventry and in Warwick's mind, our boys have a chance. Absolutely. Another face-off here between Warwick and Coventry. The official Hamilton just arranging it. Slater. And Jake Patterson contested that one. Coventry come away with the puck. Um, here's Richard Belfit. Um, the experienced um, head, I think it's fair to say, um, in these two teams. He's been around for quite a long time. He's in his late 20s now. Um, He's wasted that, though. He's wasted that. And Warwick just needs to get a hold of a puck. String a few counter-attacks together. Get a couple of shots on goal just to regain that confidence. Again, the puck's gone wayward. Yes, David Coles winning back possession for Coventry. You move forward now. They look threatening that three-pronged attack coming forward. And that's tackle. Slater fantastically dispossessed, uh, but gifted the puck back to Slater. He's growing into the game a little bit. Him and Luke Brittle earmarked for so long as the key players. Um, Iggy as well, the number 83 for Coventry. Yeah. Um, he'll be important. Um, very, very skillful indeed. He's taken a couple of Warwick players out there, knocking the ball against the boards. And getting it back again, and Iggy with a shot. Harrison manages to block it, but Slater will pick up the loose puck now, and he'll move in, and that's into the side netting. But just for a brief moment there, I think a few Coventry fans thought that was three all, a big hit in the corner there. Pattinson um, getting in and amongst um, his opponents. Here's Cousins for Coventry in the defensive zone. Across to Slater, who's a little further back than maybe he'd like to be, but he'll bring the puck forward from the back. And here's Luke Brittle running at the work defence. And he looks dangerous. And he scoops the shot into the side netting again. Warwick living dangerously at the moment, Dan. Yeah, they are indeed. But Harrison again dives down on the puck. He's going to cause a face-off for Richard Belfit in these situations. How valuable is he? It seems to be a bit of a personal battle between him and Slater and Brittle, whichever one's coming forward. And our man Richard Belfit certainly winning out at the moment. Um, as long as we've got him there in, that, in our defensive zone, sweeping up. We're going to look confident between him and Harrison. We really do look hard to break down. Another face-off being contested here. Uh, this time by Luke Brittle and Josh Holly, who always seems keen. Uh, oh, no, no, change of change of lines, change of tactics. Um, it's Benson who will contest that. Won it um, again. And Warwick come away with it. Um, much more encouraging in that aspect of their game. Now here comes, here comes Benson, dispossessed though. And Luke Brittle 
who's beginning to really put a stamp on the game. Olivia Mason, who's been peripheral, but did score that first commentary goal. Uh, reminder, she is the first female player ever to represent um, either one of these sides in ice hockey. Um, and she, whilst largely quiet down, she's shown parts of her game which have real potential. Yeah, she stood her ground, but you know, especially in the second period, the fights have broken out. We've had a couple already, and there's been some real big hits apart from that. You've got to feel for her in that situation. You've got to think what must be going through her head when she sees these big lads barging each other out of the way. But a bit of goal hanging from Olivia Mason there, but you can't blame her. I think she's still a ground. Oh, here's a good opportunity for... Ah, it's that's a real! Goal. That's a piece. Dan Harrison never quite cleared that properly, and they've paid the price. A really, really unfortunate mistake from Dan Harrison. He's been so good, and Tommy... Taki Leinen scored. Yeah, what a goal that was. We said Warwick were living dangerously. Dan Harrison came darting 5, 10 yards out of his net to clean a puck from his defensive area. It all went awry. And Tommy Pakenainen slams it into the top right-hand corner of the net. And we are all tired at Friel. And how big a blow to Warwick will that be now? Back to square one. Is that a game changer? Warwick have led for a lot of this match. Now it's all even. 3 all here, nine minutes gone of the second period. We're about halfway through the match now. Um, and it's very, very evenly poised. It is evenly um, poised. And this is when the big boys at commentary are going to have to show their worth. They're going to have to turn the screw now. Luke Brittle, Rich Slater back on the ice. This is a big chance for commentary now. Warwick have got to really, really dig deep and show what they're made of now. A couple of alumni in this Warwick team. Um, there's Tim Donison, graduated from Warwick, now studying at Oxford. Murray Mitchell as well, a former Warwick um, well, graduate from the university. He's now working at uh, Jaguar Land Rover in the local area. Their experience. And he's, he's, he's in the Simbin. He's in the Simbin. Well, there we go. Maybe that's an example. Delay of game by Murray Mitchell. As soon as he comes on, in the Simbin. Power play for Coventry. And this is real back to the wall stuff for Warwick. Just gone a goal down. And now they're facing a power play. Big chance for Cov here. Warwick 3, Coventry 3 here at the Sky Dome, bringing you live coverage from Raw 12.51am and Warwick TV. We'll be uh, broadcasting again on Sunday um, for the men's football uh, and the tennis as well. Um, we'll be reporting uh, from University of Warwick campus. Um, be a fantastic day, but for now, um, all our attention is on the ice hockey. Mix the question. Got Warwick off to a winning start yesterday. And the Warwick crowd are singing as loudly as they possibly can because they know their team needs a boost. Um, Dan, I suppose the supporters do have a role to play. You know, it, they'll be feeling a little deflated, the Warwick players out there on the ice. But hearing the support of Warwick will surely help to, to give them a little um, second wind, if you like. Yeah, well, we are outnumbered quite dramatically by the Cough fans. They are the ones making most of the noise at the moment. Their team are the ones of the ascendancy. They're on home turf. And, you know, this is a big last 10 minutes of the second period for Warwick now. They may, they may end this second period one, two goals down, but they can't let it get out of sight. It's still level. They still have to cling on to that fantastic play in the first period. Haven't really shown much at all going forward in this period so far, but we're just about the halfway mark through the match. It's all square, and we couldn't ask for a more finely poised game, could we, Isaac? It's been brilliant. Absolutely not. Two minutes before uh, the end of the first period, Warwick led 3-1. Now it's 3 all and a very different complexion on this game. Maybe Coventry have just timed their run well. Maybe they've grown into the game. And there's Jonathan Stein with a stunning run, deflected. Yeah. Dan Harrison was ready to dive there, I think, but uh, didn't have to in the end. And now Warwick will look to, uh, to clear out with Josh Holly um, coming across. But Coventry win the puck back briefly. Warwick should clear their lines, but again, they're struggling to do so. And that's a bit of a wild hack away. Um, from Warwick, they just want to get the puck away from their zone. And on um, back on comes Richard Belfit. Massive Consala as well, the number 24. Yep. A stable presence. Acting president um, at the club, along with uh, Tom Hiscock. Neither of them actually played in varsity last year, but they've both been instrumental so far in the 20, uh, 31 minutes of action Sorry, we've seen. Um, scrappy in amongst the Warwick goal mouth um, at the moment. Um, Coventry with possession in the middle um, of the rink. Um, but here's Liam Marsden, the scorer of two of Warwick's goals, um, looking to win possession back. Cousins forward for Coventry. And now Wiggy, number 83, so talented um, with a stick in his hand. Um, but he's been crowded out by Warwick, and now they can move forward. And finally a chance for them to get... And Marsden with a chance! Good save from Alex Young! 
And he hasn't managed to put the rebound in the back of the net down. And the first chance for Warwick in a little while. The first chance. And coincidentally, just when Murray Mitchell was back on, just when the power play ended. And you can tell mentally and, and physically as well, that boosted Warwick. Here's Luke Brittle, Luke Brittle losing control of the puck just Mitchell. at a crucial time. And we know Mitchell's a graduate, we know he's a bit of a B-teamer, but he'd come back on, he's G'd the team up, and that is a real pivotal interception to dispossess Luke Brittle, but com commentary come pouring forward again. Yes, uh, Rich Slater looking dangerous. We talked about Slater, we talked about Brittle, um, and they are looking Ominous, increasingly yeah. influential. Um, as this game goes on, Dan Harrison will uh, go down quite comfortably to field. That, a bit of pushing and shoving there, Slater. Sticks coming on, now Slater. Rich Slater is really losing it here. He picks up his stick again um, and looks to move away, but there are a couple of Warwick players. He shoved there, fully shoved them in the chest. Um, yeah. And a reminder that this is, uh, this is high stakes. This is high intensity and high pressure. Yeah, and that was between Slater and Consala. Consala, the bigger man, you can tell he's a bit tempered. He's brought himself off. Really sensible play. We don't want our players to get carried away and end up in the sim bin again. So sensible play from Consala. We can't afford for our key men to get wound up. I've got to say, it's those Coventry players who are initiating these shoving matches, these handbags. It's certainly not the Warwick players. They're holding their own and they're trying to concentrate on the game yep. in hand. That's true, but it's probably worked for Coventry so far in this second period. They're back on level terms, certainly in the ascendancy at the moment. This is more what we expected from them. It it's looks Slater. like roughing up our boys has worked a bit for them. Slater and Brittle, a dynamic duo um, for Coventry, uh, but they're nullified at the moment. And Tom Hiscock, who can cause some damage himself, through Alex Young manages to feel that, although again a little bit uncertain. It's just those little moments which make you think the goaltender um, of Coventry, Alex Young, doesn't quite match up to Dan Harrison. Oh it? no, by by any by any stretch of imagination, we know he doesn't. Warwick, no, he doesn't. Coventry, no, he doesn't. And it's up to us whether we try and whether we can take advantage of it. I think that's going to be the defining feature, the comparison between the two goalkeepers. But we've got to work him, otherwise the advantage is nullified. Absolutely. Um, back in action now. Um, and Ferreira played by Belfit. Oh, a big hit there! I believe that's Iggy again, who is uh, absolutely everywhere at the moment. Um, and now Coventry just looking to move away, and they could do something threatening on the counter attack here. Um, I believe a whistle has been blown. Um, the players will take a brief breather. This at the moment. Um, this game very, very, very finely poised. It's very evenly poised. It's very difficult to pick a winner. And it differs as we've got a delay for a minor injury over in the far corner. Differs from the other fixture, the other ice hockey games in, that res in this respect in previous years. And it's much, much better for the neutral. It's much, much better for the fans. Everyone's really, really enjoying it. And I can't tell you now for the life of me which way this game's going to go. Got my fingers and my toes crossed for Warwick. Um, and I still think we can do it. We've got the potential to do it. But Coventry at the moment looking dangerous. If they can get their key men on the puck, that bit more creates some extra efforts. We're feeling uh, we're feeling nervous up in the commentary box, but I can tell you um, that you know out there on the ice, these players are going to be really, really nervous because they know that one mistake, one bad moment, um, could lead uh, to this game being decided either way. She's quick, Olivia Mason chasing down the puck, very, very, very quick. What she can you going to do with it? Yeah, you can certainly see there they didn't. They were sort of reluctant to give her a little barge. But and she's Mason got the puck again. Again. She's taking up some threatening positions. Here comes Hiscock. Here's Hiscock. Moving forward now for Warwick. And that's some lovely, lovely footwork. And that was a really good chance um, for Tim Donison, but he failed to get the puck under control. That's what we need. A bit of a burst, a bit of creativity. Get into the attacking zone of, of Warwick. Big hit there uh, from Zemla. Um, who's really put himself about, particularly in the second period. Let's go, Warwick, let's go, is the shout from the mass ranks below us here. The atmosphere is building. Home. Absolutely huge atmosphere. Both supporters trying to answer each other, both trying to outdo each other, both trying to show that they care more about their team. I don't think you can doubt that these two sides both really value what's going on here as Warwick again attacking Dan Harrison. Puts his arm out to the say, Matthew That's a nice and cool. It's a nice and cool. Comes all the way back. We're going to have a face off in Warwick's attacking zone. That's an error from Kov. And half a chance for the Warwick forwards. Yes, they've got to start capitalising on these half chances, have Warwick. They've had plenty of sniffs. 
And this is a really, really important time, I think you've got to say, for Warwick. If they can run away with it in the next couple of minutes. Here comes Slater. Here's Slater now to Brittle. Coventry again looking dangerous on this counter attack. Brittle with a shot. And Harrison manages to rebuff that. What a save that was. It's the deadly duo, Slater and Brittle combining. And for, and for me, Harrison in goal. What a, what a catch. He's just made it look effortless. Catches it in his paw. Um, and it looks like we're going to have a face off, but Slater and Brittle combining, Isaac. We've gone on and on about them all match, Slater and Brittle, but really they are the two players you think who can decide this um, for Coventry tonight. If Warwick can keep them quiet at the moment, they're really struggling. It's yeah. Bigger the devil is Slater and it is. Iggy with a great opportunity. And they've had so much ice time as well, Slater and Brittle, and you can see why. Creating opportunities just like that, almost from nothing. They are worth their weight in gold to this Coventry team, but surely they are going to tire, particularly in the third period. Um, so it's still in our hands. Yes, Harrison managed to smother that, but you do wonder at the moment. Warwick's goal living a charmed life um, as Brittle contests uh, with Patterson, and I think that uh, the Brittle won that. Um, now Coventry again camped at the moment in Warwick's um, defensive zone uh, as Slater passes the puck, and they're looking certainly for Iggy, who's loitering just in the just in the goal mouth area. They're camped looking out. Looking to sniff out any key opportunities. Commentary again coming forward. Now a chance for Warwick to break. Here's Tom Hiscock, who's always leading those Warwick charges. But unfortunately, um, puck back to Coventry. Um, you know, at the moment, it's getting almost into really, really good positions um, and then giving the puck away. Warwick will be frustrated. Narrowly wide there from Brittle, but they're still in and around Dan Harrison's net. And Coventry with a really, really good opportunity here. Harrison not saves it again. Lights. Harrison saves it again, and this is this is real. This is not not great play from Warwick. Warwick really struggling to retain possession of the puck. Worrying, worrying times for Warwick. They need to get through to the end of the third period. They need the buzzer to go in about four minutes with no more damage inflicted. This has been Coventry's second period, hasn't it? Yeah, Dan? very much so. You know they've been absolutely camped out in Warwick. Dan Harrison sitting there shaking his head. He still is keeping his team in this game at the moment. And you know from Warwick's point of view. They're on the back foot so much that when they do get the puck, when they do get the chance to break out, break into the neutral zone and into Cobb's defensive zone, they're panicking. There's no options there. They're not breaking out quick enough and they don't know what to do. They're struggling for ideas and, and they end up inviting pressure back on themselves. And Coventry, again, as we've said time and time again, camps out in Warwick's defensive zone at the moment. They have another face-off here. Four minutes to go. And I say Warwick have got to hold on for dear life in the second period. They do, yeah. I wonder if fitness and fatigue are taking their toll in any way. Do you think it's that or do you think it's just a mentality? Possibly, but if you look at the likes of Slater and Brittle for Kov, they've had so much ice time. If they're not tired, why should we be tired, if you like? At the moment, really, Coventry taking a stranglehold on this, but still, scoreline is three apiece. Um, here's Marsden, though, moving away. Warwick just needs to keep hold of this puck. They're giving it back to Coventry all the time. Very frustrating to watch here from Team Warwick's perspective. And at the moment, it's really, really, really back to the wall, it has to be said. Good save by Harrison, Harrison again. Rebuff that. Belfit, and that's hit one of Warwick's players. This is... It is. Slater. Warwick really it's struggling to get out of their defensive zone at all at the moment, let alone with the puck. Back to the wall. And I can't believe for the life of me, Isaac, that we're still level with uh, three minutes to go in the second period. In the first period, we were wondering, can Warwick win for the first time in several years? Now it seems inevitable at the, at the current race of play that Coventry are going to go on and repeat history and clinch the event that so traditionally they succeed in. Yeah. Warwick penalty. Looks like we're down to a 5-3 situation out there on the, on the rink and now. Warwick is struggling as it is. They really did not need that numerical disadvantage. As it is, though, Coventry camped once again in this defensive zone. Here's Zemler for Coventry, who's flattered to deceive so far. Um, Dan Harrison punches that away, and it's a goal! And that was coming, that has been coming. And it's Luke Brittle who's made the difference. 4-3 to Coventry from close range. Coventry huddle, they lead them with 3-1 down two minutes before the end of the first period. And now with three minutes to go before the end of the second period, it's Warwick 3, Coventry 4. Pressure, pressure and pressure from Coventry. They had a two-man advantage, 5v3. They had to make it count, and quite frankly, they did. Lou Brittle, the man for the big occasion, he's done it. But with three men out there on the ice, two men down, really difficult. Um, and, th and that's proved. But, but we're back to level now. And Come on, Warwick.
Dan Harrison looks weary in that net. He's done so much. Here's Slater coming forward. A good save from Harrison again. This is one-way traffic here on Raw 12.51 a.m. Coventry completely dominating at the moment. They are really, really taking a stranglehold on the second period. I wonder if they had words at, at the end of the first period, Dan, and said, look, this isn't good enough. We're better than Warwick. We can do this. At the moment, they are acting like they are the better side. Yeah, potentially. But I also think it's a matter of the, the key men living up to their billing. You know, Slater and Brittle have, have really come to the forefront in this second period. The Cov fans taught the Warwick a lot. If you're not singing anymore, they're certainly right about that because they've got nothing to sing about at the moment. The team have fallen to They've barely managed to get over the halfway line in this second period. Disappointing it's like a training stuff. training exercise, attack against defence at the moment. Yep. Really, I, I cannot overestimate. They give it away again. But here come, here come Coventry. Hitchcock sticks out a timely, a timely stick, <laughs> I suppose. Yep. Um, a Zemla. Um, However dominant Coventry have been, there's only one goal in it. We saw at the end of the first period, there's only one goal in it. Too fragile a lead it proved to be. Same could be said for Warwick versus Coventry at the moment. It's only 4-3 to Cov. As long as we keep it at one, we are still very much in this. We need to see it out for another minute and a half. Take the buzzer. One goal down and it's still anyone's game. At the moment, I'm anxiously looking at the clock in front of me because we've got a minute and 22 seconds before the end of the second period. Um, and I really, I think for Warwick, it's just about holding on to that one goal deficit, regrouping and saying, look, we've done it in the first period. We've dominated. We've got in amongst them. We've shown them what we can do. Now we need to do it again for 20 more minutes. Yep. That's it. We need the big hitters. We need Belfit to be running the game like he was in the first period. We need Holly to be getting up, roughing up Kov players and it's just it just hasn't really happened there's been no fluidity to it as Consala demonstrates quite neatly there with a speculative effort but this is a little bit of pressure for Warwick more than they have had and just as I say that Belfit pushes the puck up towards the Coventry goal pretty much aimlessly Coventry will clear their lines they are looking very comfortable they're looking like the more experienced team like we know they are at the moment I suppose that's the frustration at the moment is that it's that Warwick are just gifting possession back to Coventry. Wave after wave of attacks. Warwick's defence is overworked, overstretched. Really, really frustrating um, as a University of Warwick student to be watching this at the minute. Um, Warwick 3, Coventry 4. Um, less than a minute to go before the end of the second period. What do you say, Dan? If you, if you are the captain, if you're Matt, Matt Consala, if you're Tom Kiz, Hiscock, what are you saying to your teammates at the end of this period? Oh, that's a n nice effort. First we've seen in a while. What do you say at the end of the second period? You say, get your heads down and play like we know you can play. From Cobb's perspective, their tactics have worked out absolutely brilliantly. You know, it's kept it scrappy early doors in this second period. Started, started a, a few fights, caused a few ripples. Warwick boys got a few power plays against them. A few simbins, a few penalties. They lost their temperament, lost their concentration. And, you know, look how it's turned out. They completely lost their cool and the game's been flipped right on its head. Warwick at the end of a second period. I've got to oh, say, is that a great it? opportunity? No. Warwick nearly wow. grabs an equaliser against the run of play there, but Alex Young managed to scoop it out. Rich Slater pursues the clearance from Coventry, but Warwick will mop up. Um, and with just 15 seconds to go, it seems inevitable that they will be trailing at the end of the second period now. Luke Brittle retaining possession cleverly um, in the uh, Warwick attacking zone. Here's Hiscock scooping it round to Hackinson. Axel Hackinson, a little peripheral. There's the buzzer. Warwick three, Coventry four at the end of this second period. It's been a really, really frustrating 20 minutes for, uh, for Warwick. They've really, really struggled to stem the Coventry tide. Not what Warwick were hoping for. They were leading 3-2 uh, two, two at the end. Unfortunately, though, it's been all Coventry in this second period. And now Warwick have to find a way to get back in this game. End of the second period now. Warwick three, Coventry four. Welcome back to the studio then. Exciting second period. Tight, tense and nervous in Varsity 2014. Um, Rick, it's turned around. Do you deserve to be 4-3 down? Uh, I think so, yeah. We've been really poor at five. Disappointing. It just seemed a little bit flat at times, I think. Yeah. The crowd dropped a little bit. I think the players' heads dropped a little bit. And we really gave Cobble way back into the game that we, 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 we quite frankly, we shouldn't have done. Um, I think we had a good chance to, to reinforce our lead in that second period and I just think that for whatever reason, whether it was Kov kind of playing well on, on the O-line or just a little bit of kind of maybe complacency from the Warwick, the Warwick players, it just it didn't quite live up to the first period and now we've got to, we've got to chase the game now. Simon said of course uh, at the end of the first period that it might be Warwick's to lose, um, what's gone wrong? 
I think they started out reasonably well, but then we've had a few questionable ref calls. Uh, I'm not normally one to complain at refs, but I think it's been really, really varied. Things have been called that are questionable if they should have been called. A lot of things that probably should have been called um, weren't called. Um, and of course, that, that final goal, which we'll probably come on to, but um, Jamie up here in the, in the box was, was not happy with it. Players on the bench not happy. Dan, our goalie, is standing net there. He had his arms raised. Um, a really questionable goal, yeah. We'll get on to the controversy in a second. Um, Jamie, a sense, I think, that Warwick simply failed to recover from Coventry's equaliser initially. Yeah, back to the cliches, it was a period of two halves. To start with, Warwick did exactly what we said they should do. They stood up in the Coventry zone, they dominated most of the play, they had some good scoring chances without looking too threatening, but they, they, they looked good. And then there was a mistake by a Warwick player, and then Dan Harrison probably didn't help with trying to get out of the net and play the puck. And, and Warwick didn't recover, you're right. And, and they looked poor after that, they looked shell-shocked, and I think it was a huge momentum swing. Case perhaps, Rick, of um, Coventry's star players coming to their own. Obviously, Richard Brickle on the score sheet and get, making it 4-3. Um, have they had more of an influence, do you think, over that second period? I think so, yeah. As, as great as Dan Harrison has been, I think he did he mess up slightly for the, for the, I think the equaliser for Cov. But it's hard to complain because he has been, he's, I think, in, the, in that period, been our best player because, you know, it, at times it reminded us of, uh, reminded me of last year's varsity when we just getting peppered with strikes, trying to hang in there and, and just not concede too many and try and work our way back into the game. Let's run through the game. Uh, there is, I think, a mascot race is taking place behind us uh, on the ice. Very exciting scenes, as always, part of the uh, half-time entertainment, of course, at Varsity 2014. You've got to wonder, are Coventry going to beat us in that one? It might be the only thing they win in Varsity 2014. Remember, of course, Warwick unbeaten in nearly a quarter of a century of Varsity competition. Um, Simon, back to the second period uh, coverage, though. Let's go back to the very start of the game. Um, Cagey opening 10 minutes to the period, wasn't it? A cagey opening 10 minutes to the period. It really was. Um, they got a bit feisty towards the end of the first 10 minutes, uh, but there was, a, there was a lull in the middle um, where with neither team really um, taking it to the other team too much, uh, the stadium, you could just sense it went a bit flat. Warwick started getting their fans up on their feet, getting them chanting as loud as they could. But then it went flat, then we had the goal and our team after just sat back and feel it. It was, it was a body blow for them happy but at the same time it was getting feisty there were some huge hits there was some handbags at dawn out there they were really going after Hackinson I think he did well to hold himself back that's showing real toughness mentally uh, but they need something to get them going out there they're looking a bit flat yeah the first 10 minutes were cagey but I think that's how Warwick want to play this game they don't have the star players like like Slater and if they're playing a cagey game, that works for them because there aren't going to be more many scoring opportunities on either side. I think when they started letting the game loosen up a little bit, that's when they're vulnerable. I mean, in that sense, Jamie, is that where the strength in depth has been a problem for Warwick, possibly? Yeah, I, I think it has. When you, ha when you talk about strength in depth, you're talking about third and fourth lines that can come on, you can bring some momentum to the team. You're not looking for them necessarily to score goals, to do anything flashy. But you want them to come on, create momentum, make some hits, make some good plays, be sound defensively. Warwick players haven't really done that. When they've been on the ice, they've looked a little bit scared. There's, there's been too much trepidation and, and they've been a liability. And they've also been on the ice too long. Coventry, to give them credit, have done really well matching them up. Simon, did, um, did Warwick lack leadership in that last 10 minutes? Did it look a bit rudderless? Did they look lacking in confidence possibly? No, I think, I think the leaders were doing their job. Tom Hiscock, we don't know him as a particularly defensive player, but he's been back there making some absolutely vital uh, uh, poke checks and things with his stick, knocking the puck away. There was one where Brittle was almost clean through and it was a last second thing and he just knocked the puck away from him, showing great strength of mind and keeping on battling. But I think it's just uh, some of the lower down players that need to pull up their socks. If they're not going to commit fully, they need to get off the ice. Like, like Jamie was saying, Coventry have been taking advantage of those times where we've had these players out there. They need to get the puck deep and get a change and get off the ice. Let our top level players get out there and do the damage. Yeah, I think it's been hard just because, you know, Cov have had the momentum in that second period. I think some of our some of our newer guys, some of the guys who maybe haven't had this experience before, have been a little bit overawed by the occasion, and I think they need to kind of feel their way into the game if they're going to be able to kind of make any kind of impact. Plenty more still to come, then we'll dissect the second period a little bit further in a second, and we'll also preview that crucial third period coming up in a few minutes. But first of all, 
Have you ever wondered what the Warwick Bear mascot sport might be on Varsity Ice Hockey 2014? Well, it's time to find out. Rob DeMont has been speaking to him and a couple of Warwick Ice Hockey fans. Who are really looking the part this evening? How are you enjoying your evening, guys? Yeah, it's been a good night so far. Nice to see Warwick on the winning side. Of the win. Okay, what did you think of the first goal as well? The solo, the solo uh, goal running through. It was a beautiful goal. I thought he was going to get taken out by the defender right the last minute, but he took it out in a beautiful goal. Coventry's goal was doing really well today. Okay, and what do you think about the discipline as well? There seems to be quite a few power plays for Coventry so far. Yeah, I don't know. Some of the calls have been a bit hit and miss, but a few of them were fair enough. But well, uh, Warwick definitely needs to sort out their uh, their substitutions at the moment. Yeah, having six on the ice is pretty embarrassing. Yeah. Okay, and do you, uh, you, you fancy Warwick's chances for today and then going on for the rest of varsity as well? Yeah, yeah easy win tonight. Four goals. Okay. Thank you very much for talking to us this evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We've made our way into the mascots changing rooms, and uh, guys, what, what exactly is your job for this evening? Entertain. Keep everyone happy, get the spirits high, make a fool out of ourselves. Okay. And which one of, which one of you do you think is getting the, uh, getting the best response out of the crowd? Well, seeing as Andre only just got on shift, can't class him as the mascot at the moment. So, so Cobb we're, definitely We're out of this imposter in our ranks, yeah. so. Well, yeah, it's Cobb definitely. Yeah, Cobb definitely get a better have, reaction, because we have a chicken and yeah. an elephant. They need, they need some mascots to make up for the score, so. They're doing, oh, good, they're doing a good job. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. We'll that won't stay for long. Fighting talk there, and then, uh, how much of the game do you actually get to watch whilst you're on the job? <laughs> a minute? I mean, yeah, that's not probably much. my a minute I've watched. Uh, it's More realistically, probably quite a bit because I mean we're constantly going around. So mm. one night in the game, then turn around, cheer. Game. Can't really see much through your mask. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah a bit restricted. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for talking to us, guys. No, thank no, you very no. much. No. We've made our way into the mascots changing room. It's a fantastic atmosphere at the moment. Plenty of colourful language and banter, it has to be said, between both sides um, at the moment. Rick, it's really hotting up, isn't it? It is. I think, I think the, kind of the fans are in some way reflecting the game, though. I think yeah. in, the, in the first period, the Warwick fans were louder. We were getting right up in the face of the Cov fans. Um, and obviously, that was reflected in the game. We were on top and we were scoring goals. This period, not so much. I think the Cov fans have started to get their own back, uh, singing You're Not Singing Anymore to the Warwick fans. And, I think we need a bit of a lift both on the ice but also in the fans yes, as well. Yes, you know, we yeah. need that, that atmosphere, that kind of frenzied hype back if we're gonna if we're gonna have a shot of winning this one. And if you're a Coventry fan or indeed a Warwick fan, do tweet us at Warwick Varsity, send us your thoughts on whatever's going on uh, so far this evening. Um, Simon, we're in a different situation, aren't we, to this time last year? It's much more of a nail bite as far as Warwick fans in particular are concerned. I think my nails are suffering the most of the I'm feeling it with them. It's, it's so tense, you can feel it, you can feel the crowd getting nervous, it's quiet and loud, you can tell it's an intense game. Um, Cobb have really changed it up, they've kind of tried to mix up Brittle and Slater, uh, spreading them out a bit and they're carrying their attack, they're, they're a real thorn in the side of RD. Uh, but I feel our guys just need to settle, they need to find their heads, like they, they drop their heads, you need to raise them, that's, that's one thing that's really key in sports isn't it, it's always keeping a positive mental attitude. And I think they just dropped their heads. They they were like, oh, we're losing this. We're starting to let it slip. And if they come out like that in the third, it's going to slip away from them. They've got to be positive and start hard. Go hard right from the start of the third period. And let's look at possibly the cause of that lack of confidence for the Warwick side. And Jamie, that desperately disappointing equaliser to concede about 10 minutes into the second period. Defensive error for you? Yeah, I think, I think they shared blame on the goal. But really, you've got to look at the defensive player for Warwick. People do make mistakes and you've got to expect that sometimes you're going to miss a puck. But what was really disappointing to me is he saw it go by him and it, there, was a, there was a shrug of the shoulders. There was uh, someone else will pick this up, someone else will deal with this. And he, he, didn't, he didn't hustle back and that forced Dan Harrison to make the decision. And it was a difficult one to go out for the puck. So, I mean, in, your, in your mind, uh, Jamie, is the goalkeeper blameless there or does he have to take some of the blame for that goal? I, th I think it was the wrong call. I think he, he should, have, should have stayed in his net, let, let the defence come back and deal with the threat. But he, equally... I mean, it's 60-40. Yeah. If he had stayed in the net and had gone in, we'd have been saying he should have come in now and played the puck. So it's difficult. I think he doesn't come out and play that. He's probably got a 1-0 against Brittle, I believe it was. Who? Yeah, I think it was Brittle who was chasing down that, uh, down that wing, which was really unlucky. He didn't actually end up getting the goal. 
Um, but he picks that up. He has a 1 0. Playing at his level, I'd probably say there's 60 to 70% chance 1 0 that he's going to take it round Dan and put it in. Um, so, like I mean, we say, we don't know what would that, happen. You know, it says a lot that this is the first mistake, Rick, that we've been talking about in terms of the white goalkeeper. He's been absolutely fantastic that apart. Um, in terms of going forward, as far as work is concerned, Liam Martin still showed plenty of invention after that equalising goal. Yeah, he has. I think he's been the, the real bright spark um, going forward for Warwick. He obviously, with his two goals in the first period, he looked sharp. But I just don't think the support was there. I think too many times in that period, you know, Cov came forward and, and our boys kind of got stuck trying to come out of defence and, and they, there was just no support there kind of bombing forward. There was no no dynamism going forward and I think they just, they, they lacked a little bit there. And in all fairness to goalkeeper Harrison, he made an absolutely crucial save uh, after 15 minutes. It had Simon shouting in almost disbelief uh, in the studio. Absolutely stunning stop from the white goaltender, Simon. I was, there was um, a quite poor turnover. Once again to Brittle, so carrying their main threat. You don't want to turn it over to these top guys because they're going to tr quite often punish you. Uh, he took it in, he had a one-on-one -on -one with a defenseman, but instead of trying to take it round him, he used him as what we call a screen, so where he's blocking the goalie's um, line of sight. And then he took a quite powerful shot, which um, Dan just flashed the glove and he caught it. I think he surprised himself to a certain extent with the glove save because he'll have only seen it at the last second. And it was flying into the right-hand side of the goal. But it was a stunning save. And then he followed it up a few, uh, about a minute later with another stunner on the other side of the goal. He's keeping us in it. Even though he had that questionable call, he's, he's really keeping himself. us in it. He's redeemed himself, absolutely. Uh, massive goalkeeper, but very agile indeed. Um, Jamie... Um, it was a case of almost from that point onwards, though, of attack we defence for the last five minutes or so. Um, Coventry almost camped in the Warwick defensive half and, and they were peppering the goal with shots. Yeah, it was very strange to see after the first half of that period. Warwick did look a little bit shell-shocked and they didn't really know what they were doing, I think, a lot of the time. They weren't passing the puck out of the zone, they were just flicking it out. Coventry were coming back in. They went back to what they were doing in the first period and taking really stupid penalties. There was a, a too many men call, which basically is just sloppy communication when another man comes onto the ice and you have six men instead of, instead of five. And that really can't happen at all at this level, especially not twice in one game. And those are the kind of mistakes that are going to see Warwick lose this game. And Rick, certainly the kind of mistakes that lost Warwick the game last year. I mean, you, you know, you were standing next to the studio and you said reminiscent, unfortunately, of what happened last year. Yeah, I think especially the last five minutes, you know, Dan Harrison for me was man of the match last year and, and, and it looks that way again. Um, really just getting peppered with strikes and, and he, he hung in there well, but it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge for him and I just think that Warwick need to kind of get a grip in this one in the third period if they're going to have a chance of winning it. 18 minutes into the second period. Controversy, not for the first time uh, this evening. And I think Jamie uh, wants to rant a little bit about this one. Um, Coventry going 4-3 up. Should it have stood? It <laughs> I, I will say no, but equally, if I was a Coventry fan, I'd say absolutely. I mean, it, it's one of those calls that's very hard to see for us on, up here. It's very hard to see for the referees to see. It was a high, high touch call, which means the, the stick of the player is not allowed to touch the puck if it's above the, the, the crossbar's height. And it was very difficult to see. I certainly thought that it was, and that it deflected down, and that's what caused the goal. Certainly, Dan Harrison was furious. Belfit on the bench was furious. A few of the fans were furious. So I'd say, again, it's a marginal call. And for me, I don't think it was a goal. Simon, does a, does a referee have a real difficulty in getting a technicality like that correct in the heat of the moment? It is heat of the moment calls, and you do expect errors. But for me and for some of the players, especially on the Warwick side, they've been chatting to him. I don't think they're happy. I think he's almost made too many of these controversial calls. They've had two body blows, that, that goal that was disallowed in the first and um, that call there where you could see um, they weren't happy. I think you can judge a lot about a ref's call and whether it should have genuinely been a good call by the player's reaction. And when Dan was stood there with his arms wide open, frustrated, guys on the bench shouting to get the ref's attention, you know that there's something wrong and I think it was quite obvious. I mean, it's hard to say for sure, it, you know, with, with two pretty borderline decisions, but it's just frustrating when it's a game with such fine margins, you know, one goal in it in, at the end of each period, um, with a two goal swing for obviously for Coventry there. And you just think when you are so reliant on, you know, it's such a close game and you're so reliant on the referee to have both decisions go against you, you're not, you're not saying he's wrong for, for certain, but it's just frustrating, I think, as a Warwick fan. Only the second game of Varsity 2014 and already some refereeing controversy for you. Um, nonetheless, though, Jamie, Coventry. R4-3 up, it's not going to change. 
Do you see Warwick getting back into this in the first period? And if so, how? I, I, I think they definitely could. And I think they are the stronger team from top to bottom. It will be interesting to see if Coventry make a goaltending change. They have two goalies on the bench. And the plan before the game was to bring Mattis on in one of the periods. Such a close game. I don't, I don't see them personally doing that because he is the weaker of the goalies. If they do, Warwick stand a very good chance. If they don't, Warwick still need to, to play discipline. There's 20 minutes left. That's a lot of time. If they start trying to play run and gun hockey and score a lot of goals, I think Coventry's speed and skill on the counter attack will probably play to their advantage. It's a massive cliche, but the next goal is absolutely crucial. Coventry score. I think they've, they've got the, the top end talent certainly up front if necessary they can get those guys to hang back um, but I think they can close it out if we score anything's possible it's a really exciting game let's just hope we get out there we put the pucks on net and we get that next goal and then we will be in for a nail bite uh, it's so exciting thinking about it let's see how it goes I mean a credit to the players to some extent Rick that they're in this position this time round because of course as we mentioned they were really playing for pride by this time last year yeah, I think even if we go on and lose now, you know, it's definitely a move in the right direction. There's a lot of new guys out there who've really impressed me today, I think. Um, as we say, last year it was 11-7, but it could have been it could have been worse, I think. We got a couple of goals in that third period that made the scoreline look more respectable than I think it probably should have been. Um, and just the fact that we're actually, we're still in it at this point is, is really promising. And if we can go on and get the win, you know, even better. Jamie, is this the most important 20 minutes for some years, perhaps, in White Ice Hockey's history, possibly? Yeah, I, I think probably not an overstatement. The last few years, they've not they've not been great matches. 11-7, as you said, was a completely flattering score. Uh, even 10-5 the year before, it wasn't that close. So I, I think for a lot of these players on the Warwick side, at least, this is an opportunity to really make like Warwick ice hockey history because there have not been a lot of wins. Yeah, I really think that no matter what happens here. That's hold our heads high yeah. it's been nowhere near as bad as previous years experience have been for many people we've not been outplayed like we have in previous years and no matter what happens it's been a brilliant spectacle and hugely entertaining this is the kind of ice hockey this is the kind of sport we want to watch throughout varsity we'd like to win but you know what good sport it's great for everyone we like to win, we usually do. Um, Rick, how important is it, um, potentially here, for getting another another two varsity points and going 4-0 up possibly very quickly? Yeah, it's a sport that we don't normally do that well, and so if we do, I think it's just a good moral boost for the guys, and then it sets us on the right foot going forward towards another, another varsity victory, hopefully. OK, here we go to crucial varsity points at stake in the third period. Let's hand you back to your commentators who'll take you through the next 20 minutes. Dan Stewart and first, Isaac Lee. Thank you very much, Joe. Yes, welcome back um, to uh, the Sky Dome here. Players are out on the ice, and this period is going to decide whether Warwick are plucky losers or whether they're going to change uh, the trend of several years and actually win uh, at ice hockey um, this year. Warwick 3, Coventry 4 as we start the final period. Dan, what do Warwick have to do? They have to get back to the heights of the first period as quickly as they can. Yeah, they have to keep their cool, and as you say, Go back to the heady times. Seems like a quite a while, a while ago now, but go back to the first period. Take advantage, most importantly, of all of Coventry's mistakes. And when I say all, I mean all. The first period, they were pouncing on all errors made by Alex Young and the defensemen. They've got to do it again. They've got to pounce like Warriors. They've got a performance of a lifetime. We're back underway now. Warwick 3, Coventry 4. This is where Warwick need to save this game. And they have possession of the puck in their own defensive zone now, moving forward. As I say, Warwick leading 3-2 at the end of the first period. And then Coventry had a dominant second period, but maybe um, the break will have helped Warwick refocus um, and readapt. And maybe they'll come back stronger and win. Still only one goal in it, despite all of Coventry's dominance in that second period now. And they're moving forward at the moment into Coventry's defensive zone. Really are moving forward at the moment yeah important early possession they need to feel their way into this third period and regain their confidence you know it just seemed that they were down and out at the end of that second period it's Belfield oh. off the post it's a chance for Eagle Coventry just about somehow managed to scramble it away oh, it's, it's, oh. in. it's in yes. it's in it's Richard Belfit unbelievable he goes mad crashes into the boards in celebration his teammates mob him an absolutely fantastic strike Alex Young looks absolutely distraught. I don't know how he let that one through into the top corner. He looks to have it covered. We don't care. Warwick don't care. 
Warwick 4, Coventry 4. Richard Belfit, absolute blinder in the first period. And he looks like he's carried on here in the third. Rasping effort that came right back off the post. He failed, the rebound fell to him eventually. And he wasn't phased by his earlier miss. He's banged it in and it's 4 all. And what a big boost that is for Warwick now. They needed that. They needed an early statement of intent. And that's exactly what they've got. And suddenly, the mood has shifted inside the Sky Dome. You can sense that Warwick, again, starting to believe. Yeah, and you could tell Belfit started to believe as well. He saw his reaction. Another big wide Oh, oh that was a fantastic chance. Yeah. Don't quite know how that didn't end nope. up in the back of the net. Um, frantic start to this third period. That's exactly what Warwick needed. Belfit's the real leader out there for me, Isaac. He's, he's really is leading by example. We know he's graduated some years ago. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of years, a close tie with this Warwick Ice Hockey Club. Um, and all his experience coming to fruition now. Fantastic attacking play there. And he just likes to li looks, looks like the leader whenever he's out on the rink, leading by example. Martin, doing fantastically. Good opportunity. Skidding shot. Alex Young struggled to deal with that. Eventually did get it away. Yeah, but still increasingly uncertain. Yeah, and looks very vulnerable, Alex Young. Back to his first period, almost nightmares. It's almost like whoever's shooting down this end is, is, is with the ascendancy, and Warwick certainly have it at the moment. We talked about Dan, didn't we, about what they would say at the end of that second period, which didn't go their way. Obviously, they've said something. Obviously, they've sorted something out because they've come up looking like looking like a new team. They are looking like a new team. I just think they've got the experienced players out there, the cool heads who've been there. They've seen it. They haven't got the likes of Josh Holly out there at the moment. Not the younger lads. They've got the older guys who can lead by example and get them back into it. It's exactly what they've done. It is. It's quite literally the perfect start to the third period for Warwick boys. So different to what we saw at the end of a second. And who knows which way this game is going to go? It's brilliant entertainment. Pattinson and Brittle contest the face-off. Coventry moving forward now. Um, and that was Brittle losing control um, of the puck. So an offside uh, call, I think. I believe an offside has been called by the, by the officials down there in their fetching black and white uniform. Um, and I believe another, another face-off will be cool, I think. Uh, Slater going over to contest with Jake Patterson. Warwick win possession. And moving forward again. And here comes... The ever dangerous Patterson, a good effort, rebuffed by Young. Alex Young again, though, he did well to keep it out, but that is all he did, keep it out, pour it away, and one of his sides. And there's a great opportunity here for Slater for Coventry, and a fantastic save by Dan Harrison. That's the difference for me, if ever we saw it in the space of 10 seconds between the two goaltenders, Harrison and Young, no comparison for me at the moment. Harrison, another big save. Young, he's doing all he can to keep it out, but he's not holding on to that shot when it's all important. Slater definitely odds on to score there. Rich Slater really should have done. Harrison again. Harrison did fantastically well. Made himself look really, really big. Just gave no gap for, for Slater to aim at. To be fair to him, I think he is really, really big. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the advantage. It's been a, a man mountain in that net for us so far. We've certainly got enough padding and enough uh, equipment um, to keep the puck out. And he definitely did his job. Did his job there. Here comes Josh Holly. Can he squeeze that in? Not quite. Young has just about managed to smother that. Bit of a lack of support for Josh Hilly there as he comes trudging off. Did well to make the ground. He did well actually to make it as far as he did. He yep. was all on his own up there. Still managed to get the shot away, which is encouraging. Four all. Just under 17 minutes to go. Commentary do look a bit deflated now. It's funny how this, this game can change just in, in, in the flick of a stick, if you like. And Warwick right back in it. Here is Saunders, the number 91, who's uh, done a good job as a replacement. Donaldson couldn't quite bring that under control. He did have a clear rink in front of him, I suppose. Um, here is Marsland now for Warwick. A car fate, and that's the Coventry fans singing, trying to uh, stoke some life back into their team. But at the moment, not much happening for them. Uh, they do look dangerous on the counter side, though. But like Warwick were in that second period, they're shedding possession very easily. And here's Tom Kiscock. Uh, the joint captain of the ice hockey club. Warwick just skating so effectively for me at, diff at the moment. They're not making any mistakes, and that's the difference. Here's Iggy, manages to evade the challenge of, of Marsden, the number 53. And he is really, really impressive. Um, his handling of the puck is very, very impressive indeed. Um, but he's not managed to go anywhere, really. Um, surrounded now. And number 28, Benson, they're looking to clatter him against the boards, but Iggy holds on to the puck. And now it's Marsden who's just scooped the puck away and into the Coventry defensive zone. His cock pursues it eagerly. David Cole. 
Looks like he's got it under control. Battered into the boards by Hiscock. He was having none of that. That's what we like to see, a bit of fight from the Warwick lads. They're really up for this now, and they're letting that be shown, letting it be known. Here's Ferrara trying to sneak one inside Harrison's near post. And between Harrison holds on Richard for a face-off. And Harrison then managed to sort it out. Mm. Olivia Mason sniffing around there as well. Here's Cousins at the back, number two, um, moving it forwards. So number 17, Rich Slater, who's dispossessed hungrily um, by the number 13 there Murray for Warwick. Murray Mitchell, the, uh, the alumni. And is that, well, very close to, a, to regaining the lead a bit. Pushing and shoving, and that's Slater. And a man's gone down. This is more than handbags. This is more than handbags. These players are getting involved. This is a crowd. The neutral faces are lighting up. This is what they wanted to see. And this just shows how close and how fraught this game is. Yep. That's what we love. Brittle and Slater, the two star men for Cov, really getting stuck in in all senses of the word. Patterson wasn't having any of it. Really stood his ground there and just diffused a bit. Could have been a bit of a better fight there. Um, but we won't complain. We've seen a fair few scraps in all shapes and sizes. And it looks like now there's going to be a power play in Warwick's favour. I think it is. If so, big, big opportunity. I'll tell you what, Rich Slater is always at the forefront of those fights. He's always there. Yep. And um, is the leader in more than one sense of word. Um, big opportunity now for Warwick. 5v4 because commentary couldn't keep their heads. And all of a sudden it looked like a decent tactic to wind up our lot in the second period. Oh. Not so much anymore. And here's Slater through on goal. Fantastic. And Harrison once again wins for Slater first to the loose puck. It's a real chance for Gomez and they've scored! It's Luke Brittle who's pounced on a rebound. Trying to stick away in frustration, Dan Harrison. He's absolutely furious and disappointed because Warwick had done so well to work themselves back into this game and now they're back to square one. Luke Brittle has scored. Warwick four, Coventry five. Brittle. Brittle with the goal. Harrison, been fantastic all match. But that was one save too many. Made a string two or three fantastic saves in a row. But it fell to Brittle, empty net. And you know, Harrison could have done with a bit of help from his defenseman there. Didn't work out. 5-4 down, 15 minutes to go. I still would not want to call this match. Still anyone's for the taking. Warwick 5-4 down. Harrison flung his, uh, his stick away in, in fury, I think, really, in frustration. He was left isolated there, made several saves, and Brittle was first for that loose puck, and, and it's those split-second moments which can decide these games. Yeah, and very disappointingly, Coventry were short-handed at that time. We were 5-4 up in terms of men on the ice. It was supposed to be our advantage, but that is the star potential of Luke Brittle in a nutshell. Even when his team are down to four in a face of five, they should have the advantage. They didn't. Luke Brittle presses home. Coventry regain their lead, and to be fair, they probably deserve it on the balance of play so far overall. But having said that, a good opening five minutes of the period from Warwick. Still time, still lots of it. Yes, Warwick really needs something to happen, and they need something to happen quickly. Um, Trailing 5-4, uh, Rich Slater just having a word with Brooks, the referee, um, before we get play back underway in this next period. Five minutes, 31 seconds gone in the third and final period. Warwick 4, Coventry 5 here at the Sky Dome. And this would never oh. score. And the sloppy, real opportunity, a sprawling save from Harrison to deny Brittle. He was gifted possession um, in front of goal, but the goaltender stood big as he has so often. Poor, poor, poor error from Matic and Sala. They gave it straight to Luke Brittle, the last person you wanted to be dispossessing it to in your own defensive zone. But it's those minimal errors which have been cut out of Warwick's game, to be fair, but they can't keep creeping in. If they want to stand any chance of getting back into this game now, they've got to be watertight, especially at the back. It's a poor error from Matic and Sala. You expect better from him. Um, and he'll know that as well. Just got to start concentrating a bit more, create their own chances and work it out from the back. Brittle to... Slater, a combination which has been so effective for Coventry as this game has gone on. Still 5-4 um, to the team in white. This would level the Vasco score to 2-all. Great chance again for Slater, but Warwick just about managed to keep clear their lines. And it's fraud stuff at the back at the moment. But now Marsden coming forward at speed for Warwick. And you always sense there's a goal in them, particularly with Alex Young not looking too certain. Oh. And now Coventry with a breakaway. A real chance to seal it here, maybe to for Slater. Well done, Brilliant well Belfit. done, Warwick. Brilliant. Well done, Belfit. Drew, uh, drew Slater wide and stopped him getting a clear shot of goal. Here's Marsden. Oh, and that's a disgusting challenge. 
Disgusting yeah. challenge, and surely that's a penalty. That's the worst challenge I've seen so far in this match. Yeah, tactical as well. We like to see it. We don't mind that. And especially for us, it gives us the advantage. Now, Coventry shorthanded. This is a real big opportunity for Warwick to press home what should be a big advantage. Our Coventry down to three in the face of five. It looks like they are, if only for another 30 seconds. Two-man advantage for Warwick now. 30 seconds on the clock for this power play. Then another minute and a half on the back of that. Can they get one back? That said, Coventry did um, actually score when they were, they were a man down last time. So they're obviously capable of compensating for that disadvantage. Three Warwick against again. five. Golden opportunity. We're probably not likely to get another good one like this in the game again. And uh, a long-range shot there uh, from Hackinson. I think that could be a waste of a good opportunity. Warwick four, Coventry five. Warwick University still in good voice as our Coventry. The fans have been absolutely fantastic here tonight at the Sky Dome. They've really helped to make it a fantastic atmosphere here. And the game, as we say, still very, very finely balanced. That's Although sloppy from Warwick, considering they've got a two-man advantage. They've got to keep possession, make their passes, make progress up the rink slowly but surely. As now Coventry regain one, it's 5v4, still a big advantage. Yes, here's Benson. Moving towards that, it's a really good opportunity for... Oh, and that was Josh Holly in front of goal. I thought he was going to make that 5 all, um, But there are enough Coventry players there to block. Looking a bit scrappy in the corner there. Fights never far away when well, there's a lot of players. Eagle falls over. Cousins comes away for Coventry. And the puck is scooped up. Dan Harrison will calmly deal with that. Uh, Matty Consala, number 24, um, mops it up for Warwick. Dan Harrison getting sarcastically applauded by the Coventry fans behind him for his error that led to the leading goal, 5-4 at the moment. Here's uh. Hiscock, Tom Hiscock for, for Warwick. Oh, that was a fantastic pass, and if only somebody had been able to get on the end of that as it was, they didn't. Mati Consala, Warwick build again though, coming in waves, trying to take advantage of a bit of momentum, and their one-man numerical advantage at the moment. Here's... Uh, Coventry again scooping it away at the end at the moment it's all Warwick it is all Warwick Olivia Mason looking to surprise oh. Mason and does very very good play there from Olivia Mason but Consala recovers the situation and comes away with the puck and here's Consala loses his way a little bit yeah Olivia Coleman there just slips at the pivot to moment she's been so good it's with her skates all day long it's Dean and Warwick again looking Coventry are back five on five. It's Slater hold. Harrison holds comfortably. Nine minutes, 12 seconds. Warwick only have just over 10 minutes to recover this. This would be something of an agonizing defeat, you think, Dan. They've done so much so well, and yet a defeat would be a defeat. Yep, and they've had their chances even in this third period. They've had their chances. They had five on three for a good 40 minutes to a minute, 40 seconds, sorry, to a minute then. Long, long power play, failed to take advantage, didn't really have any shots of note. Um, so it's disappointing, but they've got to cut out the individual errors. Dan Harrison will still be reeling from that goal he's just conceded. But this is when the likes of Brittle and Slater come to the fore for commentary, when their real experience and star quality does shine through. And we've sort of been lacking that today, especially as the match has worn on. And we're now looking to break away as quickly as they can with Richard Belfort, the experienced head, who's been so good today for... Uh, for Warwick. Here's Iggy, number 83 for Coventry. Some really good slaloming runs from the Lithuanian. Brilliant play. And he gets the puck again and he's got a really good chance now. Not quite sure he's in. A real clash of bodies in the goal mouth there. They all fell over each other. No aggression as it is. I think just a tangle of sticks and arms and legs and everything. Uh, yeah, I think Iggy over there just was a bit too skillful for his own good. He sold everyone the dummy, including his own star striker, Luke Brittle, who came crashing into Dan Harrison in goal. Um, bit of a pile up in that small net over there. Harrison looks a bit battered and bruised. Um, and why wouldn't he be? He's been in the thick of everything this game. An unseemly mess there in the goal now. Yeah, looks like Warwick are now short handed. They've gone down to four, so power play for Coventry. Two minutes. Warwick, big two minutes to hold on to here. They don't want to concede again. Yes, Coventry have been traditionally quite good in this game at capitalising on periods when. They have that numerical advantage, as they do now. Leading 5-4, we're exactly halfway through this third and final period. And it looks like Coventry once again are going to win the ice hockey. But 
only one goal in it as it stands. Here's Martin Zemmler at the back for Coventry in the defensive zone, just playing with his opponent and playing it wide to Rich Slater, number 17. Seven goals last year, hasn't been quite as prolific this year. Alex Young, it deflects off him a little bit uncertainly, uh, backs up what we've been saying about his uncertain handling. And here again, Carm Coventry in white. Uh, white to Iggy, the number 83, who's occupying a position on the wing. And here's Luke Brittle, the scorer of that uh, most recent goal, which gave Coventry that 5 4 lead. And now again, come worry, Josh Holly colliding with Iggy. Um, and Coventry come away with the puck. It is Slater, Harrison holds. And yeah. at that near post. Yet another good hold by goaltender Daniel Harrison, but it's all getting a bit bitty. We can't let Coventry keep dominating and having more and more shots on goal. Josh Holly did have a word with the ref just now down there. We don't want him to lose his cool. It's all getting a bit frenetic down there. And Warwick now with less than 10 minutes to regain this. There's still tons and tons of time left in. We are only one goal down. And Isaac, I wouldn't bet against us going to overtime here. No, absolutely not. This could go all the way. Um, so do be willing to, to carry on. Um, I'll tell you what, overtime would be incredibly exciting, judging by the way this game has turned this way and that. Cousins for Coventry, um, blocked nicely by Hiscock there. Um, squeezed across the goal mouth, and there's a chance for Tom Lilly, the captain, and he really, well, he could have finished that um, quite easily. Didn't fall from there, and Mars up the other end. Yes! Warwick have scored! That's come from nowhere! The crowd goes wild from nowhere against the run of play. Warwick a level again! A fantastic strike into the top corner. Yeah. Alex Young looks down as if to say, how did that happen? And that's Warwick 5, Coventry 5. They are not lying down. Yeah, it looks like it was Marsden with a wonderful piece of individual skill. What a goal. Dan Harrison made a pivotal save to start the move off. And it just shows how this sport can flip in a matter of seconds. Only 20 or 30 seconds ago were we saying how this could be all tied up in a matter of minutes. It could always go... Could, very well go all the way to overtime. It's looking that way now. 5-5. Five, five. What a goal. Fantastic finish. Nothing Alex Young could have done about that. Right on the top shelf. Top left corner. The atmosphere is electric now. Yes, Warwick have been good at finding that top shelf where Alex Young just can't reach it. And it's now Warwick 5, Coventry 5. Settle down because this is going to be gripping. And to the side netting from Coventry. Briefly, I think. Behind the back, got a bit, got a bit animated. They thought it had crept in. Fans thought it got in. Not very with Dan common. Harrison there, never. And now this is where boys become men. This is where the older players need to stand up and be counted. And this is where they got to fight for their lives because this could go either way. And what an achievement it would be for Warwick if they could, against the odds, win at ice hockey for the first time in several years. It's been quite a while, but Coventry still so dangerous. Here's David Coles trying to regain possession for Coventry, failing to do so, but he's got the puck again. And now Rich Slater to Coles. And that was nearly a fantastic pass for Luke Brittle. Doesn't quite manage to gather it though. Um, Brittle moving away from goal, but plays it to Coles and Coles will have a go. And Harrison they, was happy to see that go wide. Isaac, they can take these long shots all day long. They're not the ones that are going to trouble us as we've seen all day long. It's a little tap ins, a little open goals. The errors right in the, in the semicircle, in the blue semicircle that have caused Coventry goals, so co shots like that from Coles can come in all day long. They're not what we're going to be worried about. We can take that. Here come Warwick again. Sloppy, sloppy stuff from Coventry. It's Belfort leading the charge, but Iggy comes away with possession for Coventry. We all know how good he is um, with the stick in his hands. He's lost possession though. Belfort battles back. Iggy tries to buzz him against the boards, but um, Belfort was having none of it. And Matty Consala just to bring a bit of calm to proceedings. He's given it away though. You can't be affording to do that. Not for the first time either. A couple of times in this period, Matty Consala quite surprising. He's given it straight to the opposition. Fizzing low efforts there from Brittle. He could decide this game, but Andres Eagle, the Latvian for Warwick, all a little bit frenetic, all a bit scrappy. A lot is at stake here. And the game is so finely, boys. Here's Brittle from the back, charging. A fizzing effort just over the bar. Yeah, as I said before, they're not going to trouble us too much for those long-range efforts just because Dan, Dan Harrison in the net just does like a brick wall. And can't see him getting past him like that. They're going to have to be a bit more trickery. Here's, Here's Josh, Josh Holly. Through a goal. Josh Holly. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, what a chance for Josh Holly. I'll tell you something. He hasn't looked composed in front of goal all day long. He's looked to assist. That's why. It's a chance for Coventry and here's Iggy with a really good opportunity. Scoot oh, back yeah. into the danger zone. 
But Warwick just about to see this out. This really is breathless end to end. Yep. Stuff here. And it's anyone's game. It really is anyone's game. Josh Holly again. He's really coming to the game. Scoot across the line. It's over the bar. Heads and hands all over the Warwick crowd. Not really surprised, were that Josh Holly tried to pass it there after his tame effort in front of goal. Did everything to get to the net, but he can't execute. He can't shoot. Benson. He looks confident. I'm short of confidence in front of goal, but if he can get there, I'm all for him assisting. Unlucky there. This, the, the atmosphere really has changed. There is genuinely a sense that anybody could win. This is a chance for Warwick skidding across goal and Coventry break away. And this is the thing when Warwick attack, they leave themselves exposed. Zeta, great save from Harrison. Best save of the match so far. He is keeping Warwick level at the moment. Fantastic, Fantastic. stuff. Fantastic. You know, nothing surprised him anymore. He really has been a rock and our saviour, man of a match last year. And you know, if Warwick can come out on top, he'd probably be man of a match this year again. Just nothing surprises you. He's been brilliant, brilliant. If you've just tuned in, it's Warwick 5, Coventry 5 here on War 1251am and Warwick TV at the Sky Dome. Absolutely breathtaking stuff. Absolutely breathless. Yeah, it's been very good. Dan Harrison looks assured. He was downbeat. He was dejected for a lot of that second period. Some of the goals were indeed his mistake. We went down, but look at us now. We're back and we're fighting, and the charge is being led right from the back. Some experienced players, you know, we could steal this. We could steal this in this third period, and what a shock that would be. What a pleasant surprise and a great start to Varsity. Yes, this has been a fantastic advertisement for what Varsity stands for. It's brilliant sporting action. It's tension, it's intensity, it's aggression. All of those things have been seen in abundance here today. Not quite sure what's happened here. I think that... Uh, uh, Donaldson's just having a word with the ref. He's not being Simbin. That's good. We're still even. We're still even. A bit worried there for him. It looked like Tim... Uh, Tim Donaldson, the... Uh, oh, he is. He, he is. is. He's off, I think. Yep. Yep, he's been sent to the Simbin. Could that be crucial? Warwick a shorthand in 5v4. They're going to have to dig deep now. Coventry traditionally in this game have been very good at defending. Whilst on the power play, Warwick are going to have to match him now. Yeah, two minutes in the bin. Can Coventry capitalise? Um, that might give them a little boost they needed after the shock of that goal uh, from Marsden. Um, but here is Josh Dobart, fitting no. low effort. We'll take that all day long. Harrison, really safe pair of hands generally. Made one mistake which put us down 5-4 in the face of Brittle. But apart from that, it's been absolutely superb. Five minutes no, to go, the announcement. Really not long here. I believe we'll go into some kind of overtime if the scores do stay yep. level. A um, bit unprecedented. Haven't had this um, before. Um, but that's great. You know, it just extends the drama. Um, a clash of players there. Zemla clashing uh, a low shot Another there, hold. which Harrison manages to field. Still five apiece. And he really will deal with that all day long, Dan Harrison. He's looked so comfortable in those situations. Surprise commentary is still going for it, in all honesty. This shoots from near the blue line, near the borderline between the neutral zone and Warwick's defensive zone. But they can do it all day long. We'll take it. Another face off here for commentary. Pressure building. I'm being told that if, uh, if the scores do stay level, we'll go into five minutes, four on four, uh, with a penalty shootout, um, if that doesn't decide it. So, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, because this is going right down to the wire. Just over five minutes to go here at the Sky Dome. Warwick 5, Coventry 5, and it's Tom Hiscock um, for Warwick, trying to scoop the puck away. Um, Coventry, though, regaining possession, and that's some neat stuff from... Good Jonathan hit. Stobart. A fantastic hit from Richard Belfit. He said, you are going nowhere. He's been absolutely fantastic, Richard Belfit, today. We've needed his experience. We've needed to count on him big time, and boy, has he delivered in all zones of the pitch. He really has, showing his experience, showing his passion for this, for this team and for this club. Really impressive display. Well, earlier in the game, I can tell you the fans were going out during the action to go and get food and drinks. I can tell you nobody's doing that now because this game is on a knife edge. Warwick 5, Coventry 5 still. Unbelievably. Here's a chance for Warwick. Tom Hiscock. Can he get there first? He can. And Alex Young just about prods the ball away from Hiscock. That looked like it could be the moment. Here's Ferrara, though, for Coventry. End-to-end -end stuff. Great defensive um, play by Luke Brittle. He's putting a real shift in at all areas, all zones of the, the ring. Here he comes again. Here's Dodge Brittle. pass one. Wide now, and that's a good hit from Eagle, who's been the unsung hero, I think, yeah. of this Warwick team. He's been really, really resilient. Yeah, he's been back. Good, very effective defensively. Coventry again in possession. Nicked round. Brittle sells in the dummy. Brittle there. Away from goal, though. 
and Benson attempts the big hit, doesn't quite manage it. Rich Slater, who's been a bit peripheral recently, nearly the perfect pass though. And Eagle will look to just get that away, but straight to Brittle. And you cannot give Luke Brittle the... And that's it! It's a goal for Coventry! And Warwick have really thrown this away, have they? Because that was looking like a Warwick breakaway. Then suddenly Brittle had the ball and it's Rich Slater. Isaac Lee, that back just in. as you said, Rich Slater was on the periphery in this match. He may have Commentator's scored curse. the decisive Commentator's goal. Curse. It's 6-5 to Coventry. And again, we've been speaking all day long about how Coventry strikes from the edge of Warwick's defensive zone haven't caused us any trouble. Proves to be the case again. Rich later pretty much shot into an empty net there. Dan Harrison was distracted by Brittle. Couldn't get his attention across enough in time. Pretty much an empty net again. Dan Harrison is dejected. He does not look happy at all. That could well be the decisive goal. 6-5 to Coventry. And that's why these players are so good. That's why the likes of Rich Slater and Luke Brittle are so good because they can decide these games. They sniff out any opportunity. And as soon as Warwick gives the possession away, Brittle and Slater are onto it. The two-pronged attack that they have been for so much of this match. And it was Slater who's made it 6-5. Yeah, bit of a timeout now. Surely you can't say that's it though, can you? Because Warwick have responded time and time again to these setbacks. Yeah, well, they've had a timeout now. And basically, they're going to have to have... This timeout is going to have to have the same effect at the end of the second period for the third period break did. They're going to have to be rejuvenated. They're going to have to dig deep and they're going to have to score. Coventry and Warwick fans nearly taking the roof off the Skydome here in support. They've really added to the fantastic atmosphere here tonight. And now it's, can Warwick, can Coventry hold out or do Warwick have one left sting in the tail left? Matty Consala is sweeping up at the back just as Coventry looked dangerous. Here's Eagle into Benson and Warwick now Really need to find something, somewhere. Benson, up down the right wing. Comes around the back of the net and he's going the long route round. Really is, oh no! Benson nearly lost the ball there, but fortunately, managed to keep possession. Here's number 44, Eagle, the Latvian. Beats one player and comes back to Consolo. That's deflected and that could have gone anywhere. In the end, it went over the bar. Testing times here for Warwick. The fans really are getting behind them louder and more proudly than they have at any point during this match so far. They're running out of time, just over two and a half minutes. How much do they want this? How deep can they dig? At the moment, Coventry are going to win ice hockey. 2014, which would be a real blow at the start of varsity for Warwick. They have recovered from it before, but in a game so close, Dan, you know, it would be a case of so near yet so far. Yeah, well, but mass changes now. This could be a game shifter, you know. A lot of changes in that little change over for the face-off. Going to be some weary legs out there. These players have worked hard. This has been Olivia breathtaking end-to-end -end stuff. Yeah, frenetic right to the end. You've got to give credit to all the players there. They put a real shift in. Warwick now have a power play. Ferrara, I think it was, off to the sim bin for a penalty. We are 5-4 up. We have a man advantage on the ring, but not an advantage on the scoreboard. 6-5 down. Can they make this power play, power play count? It is more than likely to be the decisive one now. Two minutes of 5v4 advantage. Come on, Warwick. Scooped forward now, and Dan Harrison will field that quite comfortably. He go, plays it to his cock, and his cock will look to drive from the back for Warwick and try and find something. Saunders. Now one is a fantastic shot to Warwick. It's in! It's in! Warwick have equalised! They have found something! They have dug deep! They have equalised! Warwick 6, Coventry 6. There's still a long way to go. What a game! Would you have believed that? I would have said to you two minutes ago, we were going to be level. We were going to be going into overtime. We are there. It's 6 all. The Warwick boys salute their adoring fans. And we spoke about the massive impact of that power play and how pivotal that could be. And so it proves 6-6. Six, six. We are now back 5-on-5. Five five. And now, for me, Warwick have got to see this out and force it to overtime. They've been on the back foot. One thing I would say about their goals is they've been scored almost on the counter. That one on the power play. We are now back 5-5. Five, five. What a game we've had. What a night. Warwick claws everywhere. Coventry trying to find some kind of response. But at the moment, it's the Warwick tails which are up. And with just two minutes left. Is that an icing call, I think? Yep, looks like we're going to have another face-off in Coventry's defence zone. Another ch half chance for Warwick. Coventry look a bit downbeat, if I do say so. 
This is a chance. This is a chance. Need the experience to shine through here. Richard Blewett. Every face off is charged with tension. You can tell that the players know just how much these next couple of minutes could go to deciding the outcome of this match. Coventry, six. Warwick, six. Experience this called for. Richard Belfit skating around the halfway mark. He's been a real fawn in Coventry side all night long. I mean, a bit of a pause. I think the clock's being reset up top. Well, I, you know, this game has swung to and fro. Warwick leading 3-1 in that first period. Coventry then coming to lead 4-3. Coventry unable to hold on to a lead since then. Warwick just have not given up. They have not given up. And that is all credit to them for that. But they will want to go and win this now. It's all well and good coming this far. But it's now time to do what they don't normally do and win. Yeah, I would say so. I think first and third period on a balance of play, they certainly deserve overtime. Second period most definitely belonged to Coventry. It was an uncharacteristic lapse, almost a 20-minute lapse in concentration from our boys. But third period, they've really come on strong. And they, they really do deserve to be level. And, you know, I think the night, the occasion and the fans deserve to see overtime because it's been that sort of occasion. It's been that sort of atmosphere. Everyone's been really up for it. Uh, they, deserve, they deserve that extra 10 minutes, if I say so. I've been told that I think it will go straight to penalty ah, shots. even better. Straight to penalty shots. No overtime. So it'll be down to one against one. That I really will be dramatic, won't it? We'll see how much nerve either these sides have. Uh, but there is still a minute and a half to go. And judging by the way this third period has swung to and fro, a lot can still happen in that time. Warwick 6, Coventry 6 here on Raw 1251 at AM and Warwick TV. Just a little break in play at the moment as the referee talks to... The players. Yeah, I think we're waiting for the clock to be reset. We might have a bit of extra time than a minute and a half. The board is showing up top. But Warwick look composed. They're all itching. They're all raring to go. They want to get back on it. Coventry having a little bit of a meeting with their coach and the rest of their players on the bench down there. But it's certainly Warwick who are in the ascendancy at the moment. And that ascendancy has switched hands so many times during this match. I've lost count of it. But it's made for a fantastic event, a fantastic occasion, a great game and an advert for the sport and for Varsity. Yeah, this has been um, a reason. This is the reason why Varsity happens. This is the reason why it's so great. This is why we make all this fuss about it, because this has been sporting drama at its very best tonight. You know, whatever professional sport you try and watch, I don't think you could really match tonight for drama. Warwick looked like they were going to steal a fantastic win. Coventry then came back and looked favourites to win. And now it's all in the balance again. Um, an extended break here. To remind you again, we've got so much coming up in the next week or so. Uh, Sunday, we've got the, uh, the football, men's football first, live from Cryfield. Um, tennis as well. Um, from the, uh, the sports centre, I believe. Um, and then we've got the Rugby Union um, on the Sunday, the 2nd of March. In between them, we've got so many varsity events going on, um, so much sporting action. And hopefully, hopefully, a 24th successive varsity win for the University of Warwick over Coventry. Yeah, and a 24th successive win we're all hoping for, of course. It has been a bit of a battering traditionally over the vaster years but nights like this when it is even when it is too even to split the teams it does make it that bit more entertaining doesn't it we all like a bit of drama we all like a bit of toing and throwing and this of course isn't a sport when warwick have traditionally been dominant in varsity but tonight they've more than been a match for commentary and it's just so much more exciting when there is a bit of competition in it absolutely well in a little break and play we've been uh, out of action for a while but the referee blows and i think uh, face off is imminent now um, this could be one of the most important face-offs of the match. It's Eagle lining up against Brittle now. And Coventry win that face-off and scoop the puck forward. Um, battle run from Iggy, but stopped in his tracks and Warwick now powering forward. Here's Pattinson and here's Josh Holly. Whizzes past the post. Could have maybe done a little better there. Young comfortably waved that wide. Coventry now in possession of the puck once again with Luke Brittle, who's been absolutely everywhere for Coventry um, this evening. Um, lost the possession though, Consala threads the puck through and now Pattinson, Josh Holly. can he decide this, he's gone down, he's gone down but Zemla's challenge was fair. Yeah, loses his call a bit when he gets into the attacking zone, absolutely superb throughout but just when he gets in front of goal, the pivotal moment, Josh Holly has had a few opportunities to really decide this match, he has taken him. Yes, that's for Eagle! And a great save from Alex Young. Wow, this is this could have Warwick could have won this. Yeah, Alex Young really coming. Well, they get a better own. chance than that in his third period. Young's done well. 
Gave him a bit of stick in the uh, at early doors in this match, but he's now here comes Coventry. Team here. Good well defending done. Consola. Well done, Matty Consala, who stopped Luke Brittle in his tracks there, just as he looked like he had the run on him. A fantastic challenge is Luke Brittle. A commentary of penalty has been given. No goal when been stand. Given. It won't stand. Referee on top of that straight away. Just for a brief moment there, a few Coventry fans thought that that was the win they wanted, but. Instead, it'll be a penalty, I think. Yeah, Richard Belfit ruthlessly taken out. We won't be having any of that. And more importantly, commentary are going to be shorthanded and down to four for the remainder of this game. How pivotal, pivotal could that be? 39 seconds left of normal time. I believe we'll go straight to penalty shots after this. No overtime. So it'll be a battle of a mental battle as much as a physical one. Yeah, these players have worked hard out there, Dan, haven't they? You know, I, bet, I wouldn't blame them for being exhausted after the effort they put in. Yeah, they have, and it would almost be a shame for them for the game to be decided on, on, the, on the lottery, almost, of penalty kicks, um, penalty, penalty shots even. But, you know, perhaps the crowd deserve it. We deserve the drama. We haven't been able to split them. Very finely matched tie. It's going to be interesting to see. And I think what's happening here is that State the face-off is being advanced. Um, to Coventry's defensive zone just because of the nature of the foul. They are, of course, short-handed. Rich Slater, yep, is, uh, is gone off. And here's Marsland against Luke Brittle for the face-off. And the 5v4 for the remainder of this game, the remaining 30 it's seconds. Saunders! It's yes! a goal! It's a goal! Saunders has scored for Warwick! Could that be it? And we won the ice hockey for the first time in years! Absolutely An absolute superb. screamer! Alex Young is crestfallen, he's down on his knees, he's gutted. I think Warwick could well have just won the ice hockey. The crowd are going mad, they're waving their arms, they're chanting, they're clapping their hands. Warwick 7, Coventry 6. I'll tell you something, how much has Rich Slater cost his team then? Ruthless penalty to concede over there, right by Warwick's goal. Straight down the other end, offensive face-off for the Warwick boys, and they've converted it, 7-6 right at the end. Come on Warwick, come on Warwick. Here they go again, they just want to get that puck up the other end. What a game, this will be the crowd, the crowd are anticipating this, everyone's on their feet now on the Warwick the Coventry end. is still so dangerous, they're still coming forward in numbers. They do want a fantastic challenge by Richard Belsett, a flying effort. Alex He's Young does superb. enough, prods it out. Eight seconds left, seven seconds left, Coventry coming forward, this is surely their last chance. This is agonising. One this second. Is it's all right. Warwick have won. Warwick have won the ice hockey. Varsity 2014. A fantastic performance. They go mad. They go mob down Arison. They all gather in the goal. Helmets strewn across the rink. Sticks absolutely everywhere. Poetry are deflated. They've lost for the first time in several years, Dan. You cannot understate how significant this is. That is absolutely huge. And I'll tell you something, these boys deserve it. They knew their reputation. They knew they were underdogs. They knew that Coventry was superior, had the superior attacking talent, but they did not let them get that down. They've been superb. First half of the second period, a bit deflated, a bit down on their backs. But what, some wonderful individual performances mean that they deserve to win this game. None more so than the goaltender Daniel Harrison was superb last year around was probably even better this year. We have done it, and I'm, I, I don't know what to say. Absolutely, what an achievement that is. No one expected that. I tell you what, that is sporting drama at its very best. Warwick were leading 3-1 um, near the end of the first period. Coventry then managed to claw themselves back into the lead as the crowd goes mad and applauds both sets of players for what we have to say has been a fantastic um, few hours of sport and drama. Coventry have contributed to that just as much as Warwick. It's been end-to-end -end stuff. Could have gone either way. In the end, it's gone Warwick's way. It's good to see the players shaking hands. You know, a physical contest, but a very one that actually really played in, in really good spirit. Yeah, it's really nice to see. We've got to remember, these guys are teammates now. Now Varsity's done. They'll go back to being part of the same team. That's the fantastically interesting nature of this ice hockey Varsity clash. But all that matters to us is that Warwick have come out on top. What a win, what a really, really good win. And you know, you know Coventry must be down and out. This is one of their bankers. They don't score many points in varsity, but they would have banked on ice hockey. Not tonight, not when they're up against our Warwick boys. What a performance and they deserve this. Yeah, they really, really dug deep. There were times when Coventry looked like they were going to overwhelm them. It looked like their class was going to tell, but it didn't. In there, Coventry stretched their lead one at any point. And now the crowd, they're flowing, they're throwing their Warwick claws onto the rink. Players are picking them up. They're absolutely delighted. Yeah, they're delirious, aren't they? 
and it, it's fantastic. They've, they've done it. They've really done it this year. Dan Harrison now, helmet off. You can see him on all his glory. What a hero. But it, it's the mix. It's the mix of experience. It's the mix of experience. Like Richard Belfit has been so long a part of this team. But the likes of Josh Holly as well, the fresher. They've had this, this perfect blend of experience and young, exuberant, exciting talent. And, it, and it's all worked. It's all come off. And they really deserve it. I'm absolutely made up for them. Absolutely made up for them is the correct phrase here. They have swept, they have really worked for this. And it's good to see the two players, two teams in a presentation afterwards. They've both fought equally. Coventry look gutted, but they have really contributed to a fantastic Yeah, match. and as the announcer just says over us, this is only the start of Varsity 2014. If it's anything like this, if the live broadcasts are anything as dramatic as this, we have got ourselves in for a real treat. Drama right till the end. Six all until the last 20, 30 seconds and Warwick had prevailed. It was nice to, for us, obviously, to win out and be on the Vict Victoria side. That's not going to happen in every fixture of Varsity this year. But by jolly, they have showed some spirit. They have showed Warwick spirit and they've done us all proud tonight. Here is Matty Consala. He comes over, hugs Zoe Bucklands, uh, the Warwick sports officer. And Matty Consala holds the trophy aloft and the crowd go wild because Warwick have done something they've so rarely done in the past few years. They have won Varsity Ice Hockey. Absolutely fantastic achievement. Once again, the players crowd together. You can sense this is a triumph for teamwork. This is a triumph for resilience. This is a triumph for believing, you know, the amount of times they went behind. Yep. They're all gathering for the photos now as they lift the trophy up. Coventry look on, wondering what might have been. They had some good performances themselves from the likes of Luke Brittle. But Rich Slater right towards the end, 30, 40 seconds from the end. He gets put in the sim bin for a needless foul. And you know what? That's what's cost them at the end of the day. Went all the way down to the other end of the rink for a face-off. Warwick scored from the proceedings. 7-6. That's the story of this match. And what a story. What a night. Absolutely fantastic stuff out there. Tom Hiscott goes over and uh, has a quick chat with some of the, uh, his Coventry counterparts. As we've mentioned a few times, they are teammates uh, regularly throughout the year. Um, so I'm sure they will try and forget about this. But even though they will ret return to teammates, you sense that this, this will it really give Warwick a boost. Because uh, you know, there's nothing like winning when you're not, you don't expect to win. Yeah, it's breaking rights amongst the team. You can imagine when they all get together. The Warwick lads will be giving the chat, and rightly so, you know, because it is unexpected, as we've said. We thought tonight might be a little different. Coventry on the ropes from the start. Warwick, just fantastic individual performances, really. A bit shaky at the back at times, but Dan Harrison really has bailed them out time and time again. What a star is. Yeah, he was absolutely instrumental, but there were so many fine performances in there. From Matty Consala at the back. Um, to Saunders, the replacement who scored that winning goal. Yeah, and a vast round of applause for Olivia Mason here, who's getting recognised for scoring the first ever female goal at Varsity. Fair play to her. Done very well. Oh, very well. Skated well all night. Good contribution from her. Very quick around the ice. Liam, Liam Martin. Martin, yeah, man of the match for Warwick. Scored a stunning goal, really stunning goal in the first period. I think that's why he's been recommended for man of the match. And he walks off with a crate of Fosters. He looks delighted with that. What, what, what better prize could yeah. you win, I'm sure, than a crate of Fosters? Um, but what matters to Warwick is that cup currently being held by Richard Belfit. Mm. He holds it aloft once again to the Warwick crowd assembled. They're absolutely delighted. The Coventry end is spinning rapidly they'll want to go home and forget about this and it's been an absolutely fantastic spectacle here at the sky dome i'll end you back to the studio the final score warwick seven coventry six my goodness me then how on earth do you begin to evaluate that quite simply the greatest ice hockey game in varsity history, I think. And um, you should have seen Simon and Jamie during the end of that, absolutely on their feet with delight. Um, Simon, what are your emotions at the moment? You can tell by the smile on my face and the fact that my, my voice isn't gonna last too much longer. 
I've never felt a feeling like it. Like, I enjoy playing, I enjoy winning, but just standing up here and witnessing that, witnessing that, that magic, I'd say, it was, it was monumental, that comeback. And like, I'm buzzing, I just can't express my feelings at the minute. I'm proud for them, I know quite a few of the boys, some of them are good friends. For the club and for our side of the club and for the bragging rights and for Varsity as a whole, this is a huge occasion, a huge occasion. Rick, we've seen a lot of Varsity over the last couple of years, but I don't think we've ever seen anything quite like that. Utterly, utterly spectacular, yeah. In, in the three years I've done Varsity, that is by far and away the single greatest moment. Uh, just that, that, that third period has had everything. There were goals flying in at both ends from like, I don't know, 45 seconds into that third period. There, was, there were goals. The lead changed hands, it must been three or four times. And in the end, Warwick came out on top with just a spectacular display. Jamie, um, what a way to win it. Um, and no better way to win it because there's no coming back for Coventry. Yeah, they left their best for last. I apologise for my voice, <laughs> it's completely gone. Um, Warwick's first, first five goals were all pretty pretty plays. They were skating moves, deeks, laser beam shots. And, and that's really good to watch. But the last two games are my kind of goal. Mostly because they're <laughs> the only kind of goal I ever scored. But it's in front of the net. It's dirty. It's it's rebound. It's messy. And it's, it's the greatest style of hockey. And, and it's what work really needed to do to dig deep there. And they finally did it. They finally got to the front of the net and played physical. Simon, let's try to make sense of the madness that's just unfurled in front of us. Um, Fantastic start to the third period for Warwick, going five for up, just 54 seconds in, of course, and the start that they craved. Oh, it absolutely was, and that, that's what we were saying. You need to come out strong. You need to pick yourself up after that, that start to that, uh, I mean, the whole of the second period where they kind of shut down late on. And then they went on from there. Yes, they allowed another goal, but I was so impressed with their mental resilience today. The fact that they just kept picking themselves up, kept throwing themselves at it defensively, the improvement, I mean, there were a couple of silly penalties and a couple of more controversial moments, but defensively they were so solid, shutting it down at the end, shutting down Brittle. Consala, one of the captains, he was throwing himself at Brittle in those dying moments, trying to shut him down. He put him into the boards. Everything improved. They picked themselves up and they did exactly what we asked of them. The man for me was Dan Harrison. Absolutely spectacular again. And, and I think more than just on the ice, though, he got the fans going. You could hear them chanting his name. I think that, that got everyone fired up. It, you know, gave the players and the fans the belief he could go out and win it. And, and you know, he, he led from the back almost, made some spectacular saves, and that really gave the guys up top the, the chance to go and to go and score those winners. And what a save at five all, Simon. The ball fell, of, the puck fell, of course, to the Coventry player. He looks certain to score, but Dan Harrison somehow tipped the puck wide. In those tense, dying moments where it was all tied up, there wasn't just one moment. I, t I counted two or three times where Rich Slater, one of the two superstars on this Coventry team, undoubtedly probably the best player on the ice like in terms of his natural talent um one or no you'd say because of his standard maybe 50 60 percent of the time he scores dan stoned him on every one he got the five hole that's the gap between his legs closed tight and just kept knocking it wide it was an immense performance jamie i don't think i've ever seen fighting spirit quite like it in watching three years of varsity to go from 5-4 up to 5 all, and then to 6-5 down to Coventry. Unbelievable character from Warwick to come back. Yeah, that's what really impressed me, I think, especially considering the last few years when Warwick have conceded goals. They've conceded them in bunches and they have had that let their heads drop. Here, I don't think they, they were ever more than one goal behind. Every time they went behind, they, they changed the momentum, they tilted the ice, they made some big hits. Atkinson in particular, Belfort, they were throwing their bodies around. Even Consala, he's a small guy. He doesn't, he doesn't have that much power, but he was, he was laying his body on the line. And, and I think that's really you know, testament to how much these, the, these guys wanted it and how much they believed they could win. I think we said as well after the second period that, that a few of the, the second and third kind of string guys needed to step up and make their presence felt. And I think, I really think they did. There were some big displays going in, some big hits and great defensive interceptions. And I think that when it mattered most, the guys, you know, who maybe won't get that much attention really stepped up and formed. Simon, can you believe that after last year, when we were sat having watched a Warwick side that had been playing for pride for much of the ice hockey last year, lost 11-7, can you believe the change that's occurred in just 12 months? It's what fresh faces bring to you. I mean, they're not all necessarily young fresh faces. Today we saw he, he got Warwick MVP, Liam Martin, what a game. He, he secured his hat-trick in that third period there. His his breaks and his shooting was excellent and what surprised me was that i think he spent most of his time playing on the second unit um so not actually out there with hiscock and holly who um, were kind of on the top line there but he was playing with the second guys but just 
the work he did on his own and these kind of fresh faces inputting like this, it's seen this team turn totally around. Coffside have certainly weakened. They've lost a couple of really good players. But let's take nothing away. They still have those two superstars out there. And in that third period, we managed to largely shut them down and just play our own brand of hockey and really take it to them. I felt like we were watching an England-Germany match towards the end of that. We were all set for penalties, of course, at 6 all, Jamie. Um, were you feeling confident? I mean, I thought it was an absolute nail-biter as far as the Warwick fans were concerned. Yeah, it was back and forth. I don't think anyone could have called what, what could happen all the way through that, that third period. Every time Warwick equalised, I think the Warwick fans were really buzzing. And it was really good to see them get behind the team. But then it flipped and the Coventry fans were getting into it. And the momentum was, was just tilting from side to side all the time. But you, you, you always felt that Warwick, they had the belief and they, you felt that they had a goal in them no matter what. No greater sight as well to see at the end of the game the Warwick players celebrating, the Warwick fans celebrating, and the Coventry stand opposite just completely empty. Absolutely deflated. The Coventry fans couldn't wait to leave early. <laughs> They're used to it though after 24 years of varsity beatings, <laughs> but I'm not sure, Rick, that we've ever seen character quite like this. And if we look back perhaps at the last couple of years, key varsity moments, Tom Murray's winner in the football in 2012, the uh, netball, of course, at the end of last year. Does this beat all that? I, I think so, yeah. Just the, you know, the scale of it. Obviously, that, that winner at the Rico in, in our first year a couple of years ago was, was pretty spectacular. But I think this, the scale of what's been going on, the amount of fans here, the, the kind of the atmosphere, because there's, there's, not, there's not an empty seat in the house, or there wasn't. It was, it was packed to the rafters. Everyone was getting into it. The players were thriving off that. And I just think that this has been a fantastic day, obviously, for Warwick Ice Hockey, but a great spectacle as well. Simon, we spoke about atmosphere. We've spoken about it throughout this evening. Um, but I've never quite seen it like it was in that third period with literally the entire crowd on their feet for the last five minutes or so. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there were moments of controversy, moments of confusion. The Cov guys maybe thought they'd grabbed a winner there when Brittle nipped around the net, but everyone else had stopped playing. He put it in the net, but some Cov fans were on their feet, but a penalty had been called on Slater, which of course led to that final goal there um, on the power play very quickly. But the atmosphere in here was rocking. Um, me and Jamie, probably two of the loudest voices in the house. We were loving it. I've, You're I've not singing anymore, I think, like with it. the chant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. But they weren't. And hey, we've taken the victory. And I'm, I'm so happy right now. I don't really know what I like. It's just unexplainable what happened. The that you go through in that last period from kind of despair when Coventry went 6-5 up to the utter tension of being 6-1 and potentially heading for penalties. And then, of course, the absolute elation of knowing, Rick, that once work had gone 7-6 up, that was it. Yeah, I, I don't pertain to be the biggest ice hockey fan, but that was just unbelievable to watch. I, I, I loved every moment of that third period. Even as, you know, as, as a relative novice to the sport, that was just unbelievable to watch. Even the sound effects you might have heard in the background have gone mental there. Um, Jamie, um, let's Let's try and be objective for a second if we can. Did White deserve to win? Yes, I, I, <laughs> I, I think they did. They had the stronger, stronger roster throughout and they made some mistakes throughout the game, you know, defensive lapses. But without, you know, without being too much of a partisan, the, they didn't get the, the referee, the, the rub of the referee. I think overall they'd feel a little bit hard done by had they lost. It was one of those goals in the third period. We both thought it was offside. The puck came out of the zone. The referees didn't see it. So, yeah, I, I think Warwick were the better team. We're all still shaking in the studio, I think. So let's take a breath uh, for a second or so. And we'll go over to Rob DeMond, who's been speaking to a couple of Warwick fans. Here with another group of Warwick supporters who, uh, well, the game's been getting rather feisty. Would you say you enjoy the game more or the fights? Fights. Fights. Yeah. Okay, and uh, um, do you think that, that, that it's reached a tipping point or do you think there are more fights still to come? Definitely more. Yeah. There wasn't very many in the first quarter. Got a few more in the second. Got a bit leery. There were yeah. quite. There was enough, but it'd be nice to have a few more. Yeah. The one, the one that I always got the tough out against the boards. That was quite funny. When the helmet came yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Came off. What is it about the fights that you enjoy? Is it the pain or just or the, the raw passion? We're all trying to meet Prince Charming, and it's the masculinity that comes out in the yeah. fighting. It's quite sexually aroused. Yeah. It is a little bit. We found we found the guy with smooth hair, good charm and warrant, you know on like and macho and man of the tree. Okay, and what do you think Warwick needs to do to uh, to beat Coventry tonight? Play a little better. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much for speaking to me this evening. Thank you very much.
Welcome back. Delighted to say, absolutely delighted to say, I've been joined in the studio by the president of the ice hockey team, uh, Matty Consala. Matty, sum up your emotions for me now. Well, um, it's my fourth year. We've lost the last three games. This is an incredible way to finish the match. I mean, going into the third, bit behind, picking it up again, losing it again, and then, and then just getting those goals in the end. Was, it's an incredible feeling. Um, I'm so happy with the team. Everyone did really great. And I'm just happy we beat the Kov team, considering the forwards are just a different level. What was it like coping with the range of emotions that you must have gone through in that third period? You went obviously from desolation when Coventry was 6-5 up, then you know, you're thinking about penalties and then you get the winner. How was it? It was a, it was a really tough thing to deal with. I mean, obviously, like, we, we, we came in through the third quite hard, scored the goal in the first shift. Uh, it was really tough to keep our, our, our team together as they scored and as we got the penalties, so we decided we took that time out just to get organised again, get the lines going. And especially that, that penalty around the 14 minute mark in the third, that, that almost caught us completely. Um, but we, we just put on the pressure from there and, and we had possession, kept, it, kept playing hard. I mean, we had more legs and Coventry started getting tired. We realised that, so just put the pressure on. Is this your proudest moment ever as an ice hockey player at Warwick? Quite possibly, yeah. <laughs> as an ice hockey player at Warwick for sure and probably matches just about everything else. What, what do you think has been the difference this year? Because obviously it's, no, it's never been as close as this. It's been a while since a Warwick win, we have to admit, in terms of ice hockey varsity. What, what's changed? Um, well, to be honest, ice hockey is quite a minority sport, so things change quite quickly year on year. Um, last couple of years we've come into the game saying we've got the depth, we've got the defence, we've got the good goalie, whereas they, they rely on their forwards. It's just we managed to get together as a team and shut their forwards out and put the pressure on. That's all it was basically, just playing, playing really tight as a team. I mean these guys, they got two guys who play in the proper league, they, they score goals in, you know, against proper players and who get paid and what have you. And um, I'm just I'm quite proud of our forwards in that sense that we managed to keep it together. Okay, Sam, my congratulations. Matty, it's great to be on exec with you and I'm so proud. But can I just ask, what was it like in those dying moments there with Brittle, one of these two top players, coming at you down that wing? I've never seen you throw your body at someone quite like that and destroy him into the pause. It was a great moment. What were you thinking? It's it's just the crowd that gets you going. You see you see him coming up at you. You realise he's looking at the puck, he's not looking up. You, you just think, you know, these guys all expect me to do exactly that and I just thought well let's go for it and I'm so happy I managed to get the same guy in the same shift just like 20 seconds after yeah. it's the crowd that keeps you going and keeps you motivated throughout the whole thing. As a defenseman what is it like having Dan Harrison play behind you? Uh, Dan Harrison is a lifesaver he's been a lifesaver for us for three years he's got one more left uh, the man's an absolute hero he's the best goalie I've seen here during my four years and he's probably the best goalie I've seen in any league games. Like we've never played against anyone as good as Dan. So Dan, he there's a reason he gets man of the match in half our games. Uh, plenty of good individual performances. Um, was it a team effort tonight, well and truly though? Yeah, it was definitely a team effort. We had a few inexperienced guys. Uh, one of our players, we, to be honest, he's he's new to Warwick. He only joined in uh, in last month. Uh, he basically he flew in from from New Jersey last night. We nobody had ever met him. I mean, it, it's it's a random sport, and sometimes you just find guys and you bring them on, and things end up going quite well. Uh, you mentioned the fans earlier on. You should have seen these two earlier in the box. <laughs> they were absolutely going mental. Um, did you hear the fans? Did you feel the atmosphere behind you in those last few minutes? Yeah, yeah, and also it definitely helps. I mean. You, you know when there's someone coming up behind you because the, the fans go crazy. You can tell which side it's coming from, who's got the upper hand in every situation. And it's a great feeling when the Cov side goes loud, they go crazy, they go happy, and you manage to get the puck and get the man and, and get that turnover. And then the other opposite side just goes crazy. It, it, it's just such a boost. And finally, what does Varsity mean to you, Matty? Like what, and what does a win like this in Varsity mean to you? That's, that's quite a difficult thing to sum up, to be honest. I mean, I feel bad for these for, for Coventry, obviously, because we play together in the league. I know the guys. They're great, they're great guys. I'm friends with pretty much all of them. Uh, we've got our ups and downs, but it's a great great game to play, and I'm, it, it, it just sums up. I mean, ice hockey in general is, is hard work. Our games are quite late at night, so it's, it's great to have this one moment in, and have that highlight and have have a couple of thousand people support you. Hey Matty, 24, 24 years, 24 victories uh, for Warwick. Let's take a look at this. He's got it on the floor, oh, yeah. very, very I'm modestly, a... of course, but here's the trophy. I've, I've um, never come so tonight. close to this thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's new, isn't it? Yeah, it's just Coventry, Coventry, Coventry. That needs to change. Does, does, it all hit, does it all hit home when you get to receive this on the ice? Yeah, yeah, I mean, 
every year I, I see them go up and get it and, and it's just... <laughs> He's getting chants that's, from down below bit, now. <laughs> that's a bit distracting, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say. Um, I'm really happy to bring this home, to be honest. It's one of my proudest moments just handing this to Zoe and just basically fulfilling the expectations of all the guys. I mean, we, we promised before the game that we would win this one. Either we would win this one or it would be an epic battle and a couple, certain few guys on Coven Dream would, would end up in fights. But um, I didn't expect this to come uh, this close. But this, this definitely makes up for it. And I'm excited for the rest of Varsity, to be honest. Now it really gives me that extra boost to go see the rest and how we do. Massey Consola, Captain Fantastic, thank you so much uh, for joining us tonight. Uh, we're going to go over to VT and Rob DeMont for the final time. Thanks. Guys, what, what exactly is your job for this evening? Entertain. Keep everyone happy, get the spirits high. Make a fool out of ourselves. <laughs> okay. Which one, of, which one of you do you think is getting the, uh, getting the best response out of the crowd? Well, seeing as Andre only just got on shift, can't class him as the mascot at the moment. So, so Cobb we, definitely. We, we are. have this imposter in our ranks. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, it's Cobb definitely. Yeah, Cobb yeah, definitely getting yeah, better reaction. Well, uh, we have a chicken and an elephant. They need, they need some mascots to make up for the score, so they're doing, oh, good, they're doing a good job. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that won't, that won't stay for long. Fighting talk there, and then uh, how much of the game do you actually get to watch whilst you're on the job? A minute. I mean, yeah, that, not probably much. my a minute I've watched. Uh, More realistically, probably quite a bit because I mean we're constantly going around. So mm. one night in the game, then turn around to cheer. Game. Can't really see much through your mask. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> a bit restricted. Okay, thank you very much for talking to us, guys. No, thank you very much. No. Thanks so much once again to Matty Consala for joining us there. Um, I don't think you could quite believe what just happened, Jamie. To be fair to him. No, I think you know he's he's played a lot of varsity games. He's been around the club for a long time. And, They've not come close, and so yeah, to to to, to, to win this, I think he, he he is a bit shocked, and it's so nice to see him up here. You know, we were we were also happy when they won, but to see his emotion and the emotion of all the players, it, it makes it a bit more real and a bit more exciting. Simon, as we know, Warwick have been totally and utterly dominant when it comes to vast overall, but how good is it really to have that ice hockey trophy back? It's it's phenomenal. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been told by my teammates from Coventry. Um, Varsity as a whole doesn't matter, it's the ice hockey that matters. For us it is the crucial thing, obviously for Warwick as a whole, Varsity as the whole is it's where our pride lies, it's what we've won so many times. Um, but to us as a small tight-knit community in the ice hockey club, this is phenomenal. And also for the whole university moving forward, this gives us huge momentum. Like, let's face it, we should win Varsity, We're a great, we've got a great tradition, we should be able to keep that up and we really hope we can. But this is just the kind of boost, the kind of exciting bringing together of so many fans from so many different sports and it's going to give them that determination to go forth and put in this kind of performance in their own sports yeah i think the really great thing about it as well is that there were so many warwick fans here watching as well and and for them to kind of finally witness a warwick victory on the ice is is you know going to spur them on they'll kind of come back next year and go oh this is it's it's, it's a great spectacle warwick are really good at it let's go and watch it have a few drinks and have a good time and that's that's kind of i can only be good for both the ice hockey club and varsity in general Right, let's move on quickly and take a look at the upcoming fixtures um, as far as Varsity con is concerned and potentially the key battles over the next few days and weeks. Um, feels almost like we've had the end of Varsity, <laughs> such has been the emotion that we've gone through tonight. Um, let's look ahead though to this Sunday um, and let's pick out particularly, Rick, I think the tennis and the football, which you can catch live on Raw 12, 51am uh, this Sunday, exclusively live commentary on both those events. Um, we've seen it in the past, a couple of close ones, obviously Tom Murray back in 2012 with the football. You looking forward to it? Very much so, yeah. I think the football is always a fantastic event just because, it, it, you know, rugby is the banner head, I think, and, and we'll be having that on Warwick TV the Sunday after. But I think football, as kind of a popular sport, is the one that everyone kind of looks at and, and, and kind of stakes a lot of pride in, I think. And if Warwick can go out there and win, you know, not just the first, but, the, you know, the seconds and the thirds and the women's football as well, then that would really set a benchmark and, and kind of allow us to stretch a good lead. Jamie, a couple of quirky sports uh, coming up on the 26th of February. Frisbee, swimming, snooker and snow sports. Uh, I don't know whether that was a deliberate uh, thing by the uh, producer, actually writing them all those S ones uh, down in a row. Um, but nonetheless, um, it'll be exciting. It's something different. It's what Varsity is all about. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, we get very excited, as Simon said, you know, as an ice hockey club about this event. But it, it, there are so many sports, so many great spectacles. I think, you know, all, all of them are great to go and watch and feel the emotion and the passion of, you know, the, the Warwick versus Coventry rivalry. 
And it's nice to have those different sports involved as well as the rugby sports. Yeah, and I think that even though they might not get the same coverage as something like the ice hockey, you know, these guys have spoken about how it's nice as a, as a close-knit community to kind of win your own sport. And, you know, the guys from snooker and from snow sports and from Ultimate Frisbee will be feeling the exact same thing. They'll want to go out there and kind of stake, stake their claim to, to, to kind of have a part in this varsity story. I think the feel-good factor that we saw tonight, Simon, with the fans at the end, the celebrations, the sheer joy at Warwick's winner to make it 7-6, of course, on the night, um, that will be replicated, of course, in the remaining sports. Oh, absolutely. And um, let's hope we get to see much more joy like this. We saw it's great for the ice hockey club to be able to contribute for once. We always put on a great spectacle. But the feeling of contributing to Warwick moving forward in varsity is fantastic. And this excitement, this joy, it's got, it's got to move forward and give us momentum. Right, well, that is almost it uh, as far as Varsity uh, Ice Hockey 2014 is concerned. Let's remind you, of course, though, uh, about the big finale Sunday the 2nd of March. You can catch the Rugby Union finale live, of course, on Raw and Warwick TV. That's where it's all going to culminate. Rick, can you see it going down to the final day? Not on this form. Uh, not on this form and not after last year either, no. I wouldn't have thought so. Warwick look utterly dominant at the moment. It's, it's another good year to be a Warwick student and yeah, gr great to see. Mind, of course, Warwick 4 0 up now after the victory, of course, in your question last night. Well, that is it. Uh, my thanks to Rick, Simon, and Jamie as they take their breaths uh, after what has been an absolutely incredible night of sport here at the Sky Dome Arena. Quite simply, a night to remember and the greatest game of ice hockey in varsity history. And of course, characteristically, as always, wonderful Warwick winners once again. We'll see you on the 2nd of March. Good night. <laughs>